I was invited to stage as a young monk. Then I told them, the invitees, that uh, when I'm an arahant, I will come. I know that you know the term arahant. Uh, I was not joking about that. I was really meaning that one day when I don't get angry at all, or greedy at all, or have no idea of any particular ego or sense of self, that uh, this is the time I should go and share this peace and wisdom to everybody, not just London, anywhere in the world, I should do this. But uh, it's not in your hands when you become enlightened or, you see, it is something, it's like some particular plantation, you don't know when the fruit will come. You can just weed out and put the proper conditions and by merely wishing it can't happen, my friend. So same way to my this practice, I thought at least when I'm 40, I had some idea or some anticipation, but no. But at the age of 40, I did come to the public in Sri Lanka. And even in Sri Lanka, I would have liked the same, but certain things by force, by destiny, or I don't know what you call it, that suddenly crowds started coming. And I began to feel a certain mystic force, for many years I have been feeling this, that there's certain guidance, the protection of this noble dharma, the pure dharma is not easily destroyed. And we need only instruments in this planet who would at least sincerely with a pure heart, you know, will recognize their mistakes and would try to, if you think you are a you know, healthy person, that you are a perfect person, that is the, you know, the biggest uh, you could say the germ or the virus in you that will not make you grow. Soon you realize, I got angry, I have jealousy, I am the certain imperfections in you. That's the first step for recovery. So, um, um, you'll see that I will just, you know, my mind will just go here and there. I'm kind of a spiritual monkey. Monkey mind, <laughs> I call it call like this because as it comes, I would speak to you all. Um, and you must know that I have gone through a lot of hardships in a certain way. I don't know whether how many of you know uh, any background of what I've been doing. Anyway, at that time, I um, it's not in your hands. I when I was forty, I came to the public there. Yeah. <coughs> And then, still I went back. I gave few programs in Sri Lanka, and I went back to the forest and the Himalayas. Himalayas was the main place I was visiting. Then 2013, 14, 14, I faced a certain situation where I nearly came to the door, you know, doorsteps of death. I but it was still, I managed to make it, you know, attitude sickness, I don't know with you, any of you know. When you go to the higher attitudes, you get lack of oxygen, you get a, a certain, it can affect your lungs or the brain. There's no medicine, you have to go to a lower altitude. So there I faced this particular situation, where, uh, I don't know, luckily, the body was strong, I was all blue. And, you know, the, like I was going around Kailash, Mount Kailash, and there, uh, just I didn't know how I made it. I was just imagining a vehicle is coming now, now, anytime. There's an impossibility a vehicle to come. <laughs> just I have to make it. Luckily, it was only the headache, severe headache, and the blue, this thing. If it was the breathless, if it was with the lungs finished, I would have, you would not see me today. Anyway, I made it. Took some days, even the nights I had some difficulty, but slowly recovered. But 2015, it was a real situation where one whole night I was not sure I'd make it. And uh, and both these occasions, I when I was preparing to, because I don't know, it's not in my hands. Any time I could pass away, I have a, we have trained a certain meditation where. We look at the present moment or the phenomena, this so-called body, and the 
experiential world with this consciousness, what you are conscious of. This, there's a practice which I started to do daily. After another crisis I pay, faced when I was uh, in 2004, this, it was in the jungle. That's another story anyway. And after that, this practice was going on as a habit. So this is a practice where you prepare normally. And if you can really get focused with that, you really don't die. I think the Arhans, they are the ones who perfectly do because they don't identify with what dies as their person. Say someone takes your cloth and burns, burn, burn it to some place. Do you think you're burned? <laughs> that's, that, that's not something you will, you know, you will have really, really known that this clothing that you're wearing is something external to you. Okay, it is very uh, tangible, very clear. I mean, mentally tangible in a way, you can see, feel it very much. But at a point where you train to see this body too, is like that, <laughs> like a clothing. Not only body, your consciousness, and your kind of recognizing things with the memories in the past. We were talking because I just, in the car, he wanted to, you know, the memory from the past, how we make up this recognition. But the rec memories are also wrong ways of recognition in the past. Without using the memory, you don't have any experiences, very rare experiences, where you are free from memory and you just see things plainly. And those things also, there are, that is, you know, how we experience the present moment. Those things also, they, they depend on this body. Without a body, you don't get consciousness. Consciousness is an instrument for, um, I mean, sorry, the body is an instrument for consciousness. And you can see you can't even perceive a body without consciousness. If you are not conscious, you don't know even you have a body. You understand? So these are very, very, it's the least thing understood in this modern world. They call it the hard question. Then, I mean, in the intellectual world, they have the idea because in the modern uh, science, it is thought, consciousness is explained, maybe it could be explained through the physical body how the neurons are working and so on. Because, you know, you can see the neurons and all that working, you know, when say you see a sun, can you imagine a sunset or something? Can you imagine? Or can you imagine myself now? You can see, right? You can close your eyes and imagine what you saw. Okay, or a sunset which you can imagine previously, your scenery. Maybe here, I don't know. Uh, when you, you get a picture, right? So the picture, where do you get it? You, you, you look at the body, how it's functioning, while you're pic picturing the picture, or you're seeing the picture in your mind, you have the functioning of the brain, you know, it's the neurons or whatever, you know, the, that's happening, the nerves. Uh, but then, where can you look at that? So that is where the consciousness comes. Consciousness separate from the body. Body is just a vessel or a... Uh, sort of support for consciousness to take place. If you try to explain through that, you're, going to, you're never going to find the answer. So it's very nice for researchers, you know, they can have their jobs going on because <laughs> it's never ending uh, solution. And, uh, but of course, in the ancient wisdom, it's well known, it's a separate thing. So the thing is, I must tell you, I'm not a sort of... Um, uh, a preacher or anybody, uh, we are meditators, they are called yogis. So now, in a way, I have to come to across an area of, you know, uh, expression. Um, sometimes I stop suddenly the flow of my this thing, I'll go into a blackout. <laughs> so, so you'll be used to it, don't worry about it. Finally, I, um, so I must tell you, there in Himalayas, this I faced, um, that's both occasions I had this thought of at the last moment that I couldn't give enough to the people. Because I was always a hiding monk, for a solitary monk for long periods. And this thought came at the last moment. Because I was always thinking I should become perfect. How to be a hypocrite? When I having, you know, I should become something and then... But I didn't know that I had enough to give also that I was thinking in a very, you know, high standards of perfection. So anyway, that was a moment which triggered in my mind that uh, I must, 
you know, share something while I'm actually like, while you're working for your PhD, you have your masters and whatever, you must share something from that, for example. So anyway, uh, that is the time I decided the, any invitations that I get, I would accept. So in 2014, they tried, I think, something happened. Still, I was going to Himalayas. 15, I went. Then also, they were trying. Oh, 15, only I faced this severe. And this was like a blow from the demon directly. I mean, we have heard the word demon, but the real attack of demon is not, you know, uh, if you're in his lap, no problem. But if you're trying to get away from him, you will get a super shot. So I thought I was very strong and everything. So first it was the body. I nearly left this body. But another one also happened. But it taught me very practical things. Um, which is like, I don't know how to explain. It's like try to remove my robes. <laughs> completely, like disrobe me. Um, so it was, it is... Uh, and what which made me, which I decided, which I really sort of value, they all shattered to pieces immediately. But that's like a test, a final test. In that situation, certain knowledge practically helped me immediately to survive. Survive means without falling into a depression or a kind of a, what was it? This is not a proper English word, but this is the only way it conveys. Um, now I have been long time speaking single, so it's for me like, you know, like something <laughs> turning back into speaking English with a bit, uh, this thing is okay. Um, there, suddenly it came to my mind, don't equalize it. A certain thing happened, I can't tell you all, it's not, you know, it's too much to sort of think, I hope you can have some idea. That don't equalize this particular problem. Actually, don't personalize it, but it doesn't convey that. I don't know whether you have another word which will uh, convey the like, thickness of our ego. <laughs> and that which we identify a problem or a situation. Problem means where all problems come where you expect something. And you are in unenlightened state of mind. That means you associate which is not you as you. And when something disturbing or something opposite happens, then naturally you'll be disturbing because you think it's, it's you, it's happening and the mind has been building up that particular identification. So anyway, that time, immediately I, it came to my mind, it's just a happening, it's just a phenomenon. Let it pass away. And this is, this is the one that made me survive. And the other thing I later realized, all these difficulties come when you're closer to a goal, when you're close to a gem, when you're coming closer to you will get so much. All these great achievements people have achieved, it is after tremendous, you know, like you have been uh, tremendous um, challenges and uh, sort of uh, tragedies and things like this. So anyway, that time, but one thing there I realized, just to let see it as something just let, just passed away. Or it's a phenomenon. Because you do it, I'm not a singer in Canada. Singer in Canada, English in Canada, and Harry read it now. You got a ring, what you know, Harry read it, and Harry cut a girl, me cut a girl. Shan, how you know, I said, I'll let you crush me. So, anyway, that was a very, I hope it will help you all also. Where you don't, this, but we are not trained to do that, you know, we have so much thought these problems or worries or whatever, these are ours, there's, there's another thought. Who is you really? You must begin to understand that. But it's no point just reading a book or you know, listening to somebody you have heard, this is not your life, this is not you, as long as you personally don't notice it. You understand? Let me do something. Do you have a scissor? Can you quickly get me a scissor? Let me... Wait, I will... So this is, in my case, I'm not trying to teach you something new. I'm only trying to teach you how to make it an immediate experience. This is my job, this is my life also. It's not something, a book there kept and, uh, you know. Best place to video is when I'm in the room or when I'm going outside, not when I'm coming and speaking. So it's a time... You see, you can't change anything, you can't do anything if you don't live that particular life continuously. If you want to make a change around you, it's better to change yourself. So, I don't know if you've heard about Swami Vivekananda. Have you heard? 
He was uh, quite a, you know, before uh, 1800, 1894 or five or something like that, Parliament of Religion. It's quite inspiration for, I mean, at that time, like uh, Anakarika Dhammapada was also there representing Buddhism. He was representing Hinduism. And at that time, uh, uh, he became very popular. There are two things I want to talk about him, but this just now I want to tell about. Uh, uh, one other thing is that he didn't tell a big discourse. It was just sisters and brothers of America. I don't have you ever read about him. No, no. Okay. So somebody asked later, what was that power? I will touch this subject also if I have time. Uh, what is this power? That, you know, just those words. There's, there was no way of recording. But we can imagine, they say his voice was like a Chinese gong. <laughs> it, uh, and something else they equate to. And that time, how, what was it that, you know, that mesmerized all these people and gave them that, uh, so he said for 12 years, there's a practice in that meditation system where they refrain even from thinking of a sensual thought. So I must tell you that when I heard this and then he was practicing that. And then a kind of a, you know, lining or a sort of a veil in his brain that, uh, that uh, is taken away. And that there's a super brain which starts to function. So he practiced that. And after 12 years, that purity burst out. Okay, I will touch that later how, I mean, I'm going to touch that part which is very, you know, relevant for today. So to know that, I mean, you can't imagine, then you know that if you want to do something in this world, constructive, even worldly wise, I'm sure, there sh should be, you should not waste your mental energies. You don't want to be just a normal person and die. You know, the greatest crime, at least recently I just thought about it, the greatest crime is to die without being self-realized. Be being a human being. You live only a dog life and not knowing who you are, the secret of life. <coughs> I mean, this is something, it's going to be a great waste, a great crime. <clears throat> that you allow animal pleasures and passions to, you know, get, get, um, to, you're missing the bus. <laughs> I'm sorry, you know, if I get, my demons get awakened, finish, you know. I, <laughs> so anyway, I will tell you about Swami Vivekananda, this part. I will come to this subject. You know, he was asked, uh, uh, then, then he was telling one day, he was said that somebody, a mother brought a small child and asked, Swamiji, my baby, my child is, you know, addicted to, his little fat, addicted to sweets, eating, you know, no sugar. So then, uh, then can you give you a mantra or something for him to overcome this? Then uh, the Swami Vivekananda has said, uh, Madam, come after 10 days, then I will give him something. So they waited for 10 days and they did come. And when they came, uh, Swami Vivekananda you know, he told the boy, now hereafter stop eating this uh, you know, sugar and things sweet like that. And the mother was thinking, oh, I'm expecting some mantra or something. Yes, Swamiji, you didn't give any mantra or anything. You should have told that uh, 10 days back, Swamiji. He said, no, 10 days ago I was eating sugar myself. So the last 10 days, I was keeping away from sugar and well, now I'm telling that. So this is very important, my friends. If you want to change somebody or change the world, the best thing is there's some power in it. There's a big difference. Now, I see myself also coming as an old monk. I know I used to talk, uh, actually, it's a very karma destiny I'm coming here. Uh, there are some people here that I met when, I, of course I knew them when I was small also. And then uh, that time also I was telling something, but I can see the preparation. Now all the energies I would have spent for more studying intellectually in the university wise, right? That type I didn't pursue very much. Whatever my father pushed me to do, I did because he, won't, he was not sure what I'm going to end up. He didn't know I would become firm like this. But so I had to do so go to university for a short while. But still I didn't perceive very much that, you know, that didn't sort of heavy my brain with all these lot of ideas. And then of course I didn't get married and have a family life and sort of go on. So all this needs energy. 
and then uh, pursue a career or anything, going for officers and stuff. I did for two years, that's all, you know, on the way when there were obstacles. So I did like that as a lay person. And then I was wondering where this energy will go. I didn't do any of these things, then where will this energy go? Yeah, it is going somewhere. Where there will, they should make changes in the people. <laughs> Something, if they were drinking, if they were sensually intoxicated or some things are happening where they can't control themselves, I hope this life will help them to, you know, come out of it. It will, because I'll be, I'll be doing something forever for them. <laughs> and I was very happy the one who organized or brought me here, I didn't know how it has made such impact like that. I, didn't, I don't know what is happening around me. Like, uh, he was also drinking. You know, one uh, like beer or something before, and uh, every two weeks he was doing like that. He was telling me, but after one night he just was looking other. You know, there's a habit he used to listen to other. You know, in the YouTube, and suddenly he came across this one, and then he listened to this, and then he kept on listening until one o'clock with his wife. Suddenly he decided he's going to stop drinking and all that. I was so happy. That news is, I mean, I'm sure there are many uh, people. So I understand how it happens. Because when you purify yourself, there's also another thing in Sri Lanka. They say there are so many preachers, so many teachers. But why people are not changing? One man asked me this question and I didn't have the answer that time. Later on, um, I was, uh, you see, like looking for an answer. And I got to know the answer. I realized that the people who are speaking or de delivering the message, they are not pure themselves. When you purify yourself like, you know, Vivekananda is keeping away for that period, then my friends, when you become pure, there's a mystic force that starts to emanate. And that helps the people. That will make them change. You give them strength. You don't sort of tell you doing this or that. You give them something to really change themselves. So I've seen wives, husbands doing this to their family. One story I know, one lady, she was, uh, during the British time, actually the husband was relating this story. He was a womanizer and uh, sort of, uh, you know, going for this, um, you know, and gambling and hunting. So what happened to him? was that he, uh, so he didn't have any love from anyone properly. His parents died very soon, very early. And then what happened, he got married to this nice lady. She was giving him a lot of c c compassion and so she, he really appreciated that. So she was very spiritual. So she didn't, uh, uh, he did, she, she never sort of criticized him, but he, he stopped womanizing, he stopped gambling, but he was still addicted to drinking and smoking. So what happened? She didn't tell anything. He had a small bar in his home. And then uh, she had a puja room there. And they were going on like that. But then she made a kind of a, you know, truth assertion. I hope my master's teachers who are, you know, blessing me, that my master, Thamma Sambhuta, you know, that I am following you, that one day will, you know, make my husband more pure and help him some way. She was thinking like that. So one day, she was happened, she happened to go to one kind of, you know, some cut in a pinkama or puja or something, I don't know. Anyway, when she went, the husband was also happy because now when in peace he could take his drink <laughs> in the bar. So he went to this particular uh, home bar there and he was preparing his drink. And then he wanted to light a cigarette. But when he tried to light a cigarette, there was no matchbox or lighter. So then, you know, the whole thing is not complete without it. <laughs> so, so what happened, he was really, uh, then he realized there's a lamp that is burning in the shine room. So now he has never gone inside the shine room ever, only the wife goes there. So he was very keen to sort of, you know, somehow to get this done. So he went inside, but with some kind of, uh, you know, hesitation. And when he immediately started to write, something happened, he said. Something happened. We changed his life completely. Why? Definitely the purity of the wife. If you any relation, any family member 
change himself and do this, you, you will begin to find certain situ you know, like uh, certain uh, things that you don't normally experience because most of us, we are sort of a little bit hypocritical, you know. We ourselves, we are, we are, we are got so used to seeing the faults of others, but we never check and we are not perfect to do that. And if you purify yourself, you know, enough, you begin to notice that purity will look after everything. You don't have to even worry. And even if you worry about your husband or children or something, there's a personal attachment to that. And that attachment itself is, is a mentally created. Say a child dies and is reborn somewhere. Would you like that child again? I mean, you would want that a child that looks like the one you last saw, right? So it took picture. If you really peel out the illusionary parts of our being, that's why some of the monks who ordain late, they just can't overcome the affection to their children. So normally they remember they say. So they have this meditation, the nine days, how the body disintegrates. And it becomes, you know, like uh, that, that uh, how the, the form of a body, the picture of the body is, you know, you see it is an illusion. It was not, I mean, we know when we are small, it's a different body and now a different body. With that length of time, we can see the change and kind of that is not the really, what is ours should not be changing. So it's changing continuously now also. So anyway, uh, this particular, I mean, uh, so this, if you just imagine another child, you would not want to, you would just like to have the same picture. So this... <laughs> I had to use some energy to talk, you know. I <laughs> just <laughs> energy of thinking. When I'm gone, more into a no thinking zone. But this is my karma this period. But there's some kar destiny also in this. Uh, I, I must tell this. Even my teacher long years ago, he happened to tell, you know, you uh, must help. You, you should go and help these people. They are waiting for you. They are your. I mean, I didn't expect. Now I can see. That um, and three years back, I was in Rishikesh. I don't know in Himalayas, the foothills of Himalayas. And there, that uh, one man I met, a man or like a saintly person. So we had a small. We just waited near the, the thing, and he just said, "Swami, what was it?" He said, uh, uh, "Swamiji, calling me like this. Uh, when you are 45 years, you'll have no time to even come to this area." And it is so true. <laughs> to think some, I could become so busy is an impossibility for me. All these years I was sort of so still for the programs. I get late. Why? Because some certain routine practice which I'm doing. Because one thing, if I come here with a long face, <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> I will have a long face if I'm not practice. If I don't practice. So I tell at least don't have a long face. You can't act that you don't have a long face. You know. If you have sadness inside, what can you do? You have to have a long face. But sadness comes, my friends, because you are not pure inside you. That's not a problem. As long as you have so much identification and impurities, attachments and passions that you are not clean, you will not feel happy with anything you get or whatever you do. It's like you have a rotten tooth, you know, in you, and until it is taken out, you have the headache. So until you clear your visions and how you see, if you had even a crisis, immediately you will be free from it. I don't know, I told this story many times. Um, you must be wondering why I bought this scissor, right? I will demonstrate that. <laughs> don't worry. Uh, that is kept there and I'll bring it back. <laughs> um, in uh, Singapore, I think I'm on my way to Australia. Now, I'm not going all the time, only one trip I went and it was for one month. And then the videos that came out of that one month, only that uh, now, you know, the other, like a chain reaction is going on. Some of the people say that this discourse is like, you know, eating abin, you know, abin? <laughs> because some energy, it will some opening up your certain nerve systems. So I hope it is an abin that is, uh, you know, an abin that will take you out of all intoxication, that will remove all intoxication. <laughs> I hope so. So, I, on my way in the airport, I met one Sri Lankan gentleman and he 
was in uh, first you know normally today uh, even the Sri Lankan people you know they are losing idea uh, the normal protocol with the monk all that is a little bit all going slowly slowly they are almost becoming like friends you know and things there is no that uh, uh, so that's a certain modern day situation that's happening slowly so anyway I was just <laughs> waiting and then suddenly he realized that uh, there was something and he was in a great in depression so he's coming from Sri Lanka, maybe his, I think his mother is dead and his near relations are sort of uh, really uh, behaving in such a way, want to get the property and things like that. So he was like disillusioned and he uh, was in a very big, I, I knew he was in a very terrible state. So he told me once from Tante and Muslim Master in Sinhalese, I'm, you know, I'm really in a state of depression, I don't know whether even to go in Australia, what I'm doing there, what I'm going. So I just told him, can you see me? <laughs> then he said, yes, Pante, I can see you. And can you feel the weight of your feet, the ground? So he said, yes, I can feel. Just that is all which is real. All that is just a thinking process. <laughs> Thoughts that you have generated, there's no belonging here. And if you just keep on a little bit, just noting and keeping on that, the, uh, what you're immediately feeling at that this moment, especially the very cross thing like you're standing, the heaviness in your legs, or uh, you know, what you're seeing immediately, or even the thought. Just note that I'm having such a thought. I'm having a disturbing thoughts now coming. And then I could see his little bit lightening up. Because to know slowly that this is an, in a nightmare, to know it's a nightmare, it's a big thing and it's a dream and we will not take seriously anything my friends even some people start complaining crying to me Bhante I went through this and that and that yeah okay but was it you that went through that is it the your real self <laughs> so why you cling on to a thing that is not your real you know real substance so but this have to be sort of re-observed and reanalyze, not to imagine something, really to find out. I was coming to this topic, so finally, the, maybe the, this might. So let me see. <laughs> Anybody, I don't know who is willing. Maybe I use my friend here. Is it okay you can come? Is it alright I take a little bit of your hair? Is it okay? <laughs> it's no problem, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, one day yeah, he was in a hurry to carry my bag. I said, "Not yet. Little later, you can. Don't worry. <laughs> you have a wife, and you have, But it's get better, you know. You 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 become a monk even within you. I mean, mentally. I'm not telling you to put on robes, but you practice these things and have the coolness. You become a better husband, a better wife, a super husband. I would say, a super wife, forgiving, not finding the fault or seeing anything. You know. I mean, to forgive someone's mistakes, it's not an easy thing. And uh, not to sort of uh, judge the people around you and all this good compassion and the good vibes going around you. I mean, you will be a, whatever you become, you become super in that field. So I'm just asking, do um, you feel the, you know, like this, you know, the, the hair you have, you feel it is you or how is it? A little more you, yeah? Correct. <laughs> And even now, you know, it's up there, and you get a sense, this is my, right? No sense of you. So I just cut a little bit. I mean, you don't have much hair, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> In Berlin, I had someone with a longer hair. So. But he looks handsome still, you know. I, when he was young, some people commented, I didn't want to tell him now. They said, tell, Gyanta is very handsome, you know. Uh, he was a young boy, very, 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 very young, actually, 18, 19. And I see it's not changed very much. Anyway, um, this bodily thing, I hope I can give them some tips of completely to become handsome forever. Mm -hmm. Really. <laughs> so just take a little bit, okay? I think there nobody can see it. <laughs> Unless someone goes in a helicopter and changes it. You can take it. So, wait a minute, Now you, okay, I put it in my hand, it's all right. 
How much you feel it's yours now? Hmm? You don't feel at all, or is it? It's gone, right? Right? Okay. So we use the word gone, you know, because we we have it before, is it? <laughs> okay, you can take a seat. Look at the words we use. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> God. <laughs> it's gone means it's gone, you know. <laughs> That means we had it, we had, we were having it all this time. I just used his hair, you know, he looks so... <laughs> so my friend, just imagine a piece of hair going, it's like we lost a baby, right? <laughs> we can just see our conditioning so much. Yeah. So, you, just very important, my friends, this scissor is your wisdom. You should be able to dissect through your mind. This is a type of, you know, the Buddha explains it very practically. How? Because this whole idea is a concept, a person, a being. You take them apart, in actual form, you realize it's a concept that is formed. Even this building, you know, you take the stones away, the motor away, everything. What is left? But it's, it's like that, or because it's arranged in a certain way, in a certain space, we get an idea, it's not a solid thing, it's an idea of a building, a name you give. The name comes with an idea, in that the idea comes in the moment of consciousness. It's a part of consciousness, main part of consciousness is to get an idea, sankara, vinyana, or perception. So this is very important, just to separate, I mean at least I hope, do you still feel it's gone? <laughs> okay, you can repatch it, right? <laughs> Make a week out of it, hopefully. <laughs> okay, so really, my friends, it's imp this is a very important. We must just begin to see the Buddha's main purpose. In the you know plane, I have was, someone was from Tus going to Tunisia, I think, small island in Australia, I think. There, so he was asking why Bante, why. Uh, Venerables, you share with hair and like a, I said, uh, hair is like a you know vanity illusion. You know, it is a dead matter. So we sort of cut uh, these things, and our main job is to cut illusions. <laughs> this our thing. Now you see, Michael Jackson. You know the moonwalk. I don't know how far <laughs> you know this. You know, in one of his parties, I happened to dance was a long years ago. <laughs> At that time also, I think I would have been his age. And at that time, uh, the sister's birthday party. And when I was dancing, I, will, I, I want to prove my cousins that, you know, that, you know, that they all thinking maybe, so I, they had no personal interest. So that was the main reason. So I happened to dance with one girl. I happened to go and tell that girl, would you like to dance with me? And then she was dancing. Then I was telling me, this, all this is dumb. <laughs> And she would have thought, she had told later, who is that boy, you know, who was um, doing this dancing? What is it? All this entertainment. Do you know what is it? How the entertainment is made? Now the moonwalk, you know, I mean, you just move your legs, you don't get any attraction. But the moonwalk, if you ask Michael Jackson, I think he says, it's an illusion created. An illusion. That the movement is done in such a way you look floating. I mean, you are like moving, you know, this part is not seen. So, that is a, a creating illusions. But in the spiritual part, what do you do? Breaking illusions, removing the illusions. And seeing plainly what is truly going on and finding peace in that. So, you let go of the illusions and your weight is lost. So he was just asking me also on the way, do you miss on anything? Like all this restraint. <laughs> it's very hilarious for me also. <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah, I understand, because from that point of view, you would think, you know, oh my God, Bante, maybe, you know, he must be missing all these things. Yeah, for a drug addict, drugs, not getting drugs is uh, something missing. But to come out of all the searching for drugs and, you know, like uh, the turkey effect or the, you know, side, not side effects, what do you call it? That, uh, that is all, a, you know, a, a big suffering. Some have known that, some have recognized, what is this, again this process, again this process. Now even some, 
I don't know how to explain this, some prostitutes. Okay, how these people, they see how can we tempt the people again? Do we, you know, uh, you know, like, this becomes a t terrible, uh, this thing. That, you know, they, when they are getting older and older, how to get money? Now even a soldier would think in the other way, you know, can I fight better? Can I do it all the time? But then to leave everything and to sort of find in emptiness, that's another type of happiness. You become happiness independent. And you are not trying to protect anything and you find this is, uh, happiness is going to have an end. It's not something, you see, it has a destination. There's another one, I remember one couple, they happened to, uh, and I'll talk a little interesting, is it? I don't know some of the younger ones, <laughs> because I'm sure, you know, in Australia, they suddenly got to know there's a mad monk who has come, so they all, all the young people, especially they are with, some of them with tattoos and all that. So I was very happy, and the temple was very surprised to find where they were, they never come to the temple. <laughs> and they, I want to give some, some points also, I don't know, did I have time? I need normally four hours, but what's the time? No, one hour has passed, or how is it? Another one more, but no? Okay. Oh, it's okay. I have to give another talk in signal, it's in the evening, right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's okay. Because I'm here only today, I guess. I got to know that uh, I want to give you these certain points, I hope it will help you. So this is important to separate, to break, remove the illusions and um, remember all our addictions depend on a certain, um, even certain fantasies also. Now, you could say that uh, ignorance has different types of ignorance, levels of ignorance also. So you have illusion, then you have fantasy. Fantasy is the most stronger form of illusion. So illusion is there, everything is like an illusion, but fantasy is a more sort of uh, stronger, it's like wine and then you have whiskey, something like that, more alcohol in it. <coughs> so, uh, so it's very important, um, let me tell you what to tell. Um, so breaking this illusion is very important. This dissenting now one couple I remember, one old gentleman, he happened to, you know, his wife died. And when his wife died, it is a true story. And uh, the wife um, he was not he couldn't believe his wife died. She was like this, you know, like she used to see the picture of the wife. So he wanted to go to the mortuary and find out, you know, whether she's really dead. So when they, uh, when they were cutting him and when they were embalming the body, he wanted to see. When they were taking the things out, all this, you know, what is inside. Then only he came to his senses. Really, my wife is dead. All these years, this, like a rubber thing, that I was thinking, this is my wife. So when he realized, he thought after that, he said, next birth, I'm not going to marry at all. <laughs> But still, this birth also he was then looking after his grandchildren and things like that, getting involved. So that's an emotional ex experience. But that's also quite good, but it should come as a kind of a intuitive experience. Then only there will be, you know, it will be a constant driving force for you to let go. You know, in Berlin, somebody asked me, why did you become a bump? Bante. Some of the Germans, they... Then I suddenly, it just came to my mind, I asked him, why are you not a monk? <laughs> really? <laughs> I mean, you're seeing from that place, I'm seeing from here. I'm seeing, why are you not? It's like something you're holding on to, you know, and somebody has let go. But who has let go, he has seen that what he was holding was a snake. He has seen it, and he has, there's no question of letting go, right? So the people who are not letting go, why? Because they are not seeing it properly. They have heard it. They have listened to it. They have intellectualized it. They have something, something there. It does not come as a personal experience. You can know from the actions of a person. Excuse me? You have to go? If you have to go, I'll give you some blessings. But if you're coming, okay. <laughs> 
So in the end, I'm giving some blessings. Okay, if you're going, you just tell me. I will do it now and send you away. That's my small present to take away. <laughs> okay. Um, I think you all are not used to sitting on the ground. Yeah. Is it? You are used to, are you? I'm not very really used to. <laughs> Oh, you made that draw. Okay, oh, how sweet of you all. This, I, this is, uh, I'm comfortable now here, it's okay, no? Because this is how they happen to prepare, this is how I stayed in the jungle in in uh, Bambaragastara, you know, they just, it was a stone bed actually. So for the first program, it started like this, they prepared uh, just as it was in the jungle. And uh, I don't know how the message goes somehow there. When I'm going place to place, that uh, to prepare the uh, this thing like that, because I feel I'm like coming from the forest and coming and telling you something, <laughs> making me at home. <laughs> but now these days I'm in flights and all sort of chairs. <laughs> so where yeah, was I? So it's very important. This breaking of illusions, I think you remember better than what I, how I remember what I said already. <laughs> so, um, so I want to give you some points. Let me come slowly, slowly. Um, so it's very important, if you want to get detached, you have to have a personal experience. So there's a level, there's a way how to come to that personal experience. Your brain is something like, if it is lot of, it is said, you know, it's like a water. You have lot of dye, ink and all that in it. Can you see your reflection properly? No. If you have uh, boiling water, can you see your reflection? No. So like this, if you have muddy, mud and all that, still you don't see. So these are the, they are called the hindrances, I think you would have heard before. Hmm? As long as these are there, you may be able to do a normal university, you know, some, uh, uh, you know, sub, uh, some topic or something to think and like that at that level, just to write. But to get an original thinking, a creative thinking, a personal realization, I'm sure when, for example, Einstein or Newton, you know, when they had that moments where suddenly unconsciously or un without any plan, they just had this spontaneous, I'm sure the mind was very alert to see any reality. That time, surely they, not a time when they were in the bar. It's always said when they were walk, going for walks or something like that. In nature or at a moment of, you know, very you know peaceful moment. There are some ideas you can get. It, we can't say it's all like that, but generally, um, because some say that when they have a little bit of wine, they have very creative mind <laughs> coming. That's another type of creativity, I'm sure. Because it takes you to a kind of a, but to get this, you know, uh, the deepest things of life, the secrets of life, I'm sure, you need a certain degree of, you know, tranquility. So that you clearly see without an effort. So these five things, my friends, if you have, there are other things, sleepiness, dullness. So that's very interesting. Normally, they found the brain works in two parts. Reptilian brain, they call it. And the part that you can think and analyze and all that. So uh, whenever these hindrances are working, very interesting, it is the reptilian brain. With the MRI scan, you can see. But today there are so many ways the reptilian brain works. Being unmindful, being impulsive. I'm sure, you know, uh, that uh, unimaginable ways this reptilian work, brain is working today, we, we don't recognize. Because it's happening to all of us. And uh, I'm going to come to this subject, it might be very relevant. Like, you know, when the, uh, sometimes, you know, I'm not using all these things, especially the cell phones and all that. You're always texting and, I don't know, some of them are always, that is their meditation today. Right? So to always be focused so much on the external world, the mind gets so connected to the external world, then it weakens. So to that same weak level, definitely to be addicted also. Addicted means you have to repeat again, to keep yourself, 
you know, you, if you can keep away with that for 10 days, it's okay, then there's nothing has happened to you. But you find that you just have to use it. That is definitely an addiction. And with that addiction, if you look with the MRI scan, surely there is that amount of dopamine which we, before in the past, knew it was only in alcohol or things like that, that this level of dopamine was released. Feel good hormones. So now it's well well found in computer games that uh, it is equal to the like a heroin addict. The dopamine that it released, the and in addiction in computer games is very well known. But I'm relating this to something. There are so many topics I want to put into you all. Uh, have you ever heard about these things from me? No, no. From the YouTube again? Uh, yeah, well, listen, listen, no. Okay. I will approach this. You know, this is very important also to know. In your life normally, there are sometimes suddenly you realize that you're coming to these programs and things like this, spiritual things, and suddenly there are times where you go out of control, you know. You go, that's, we call it the darker side in you. This happens. It should happen in this modern period. So suddenly you go, you know, there's some things which you do hiding yourself, hidden. And that is definitely harming you, your spiritual thing, and it's sort of draining whatever you are, you know, feeling in. So this, if this is happening in your life, that means this kind of distraction is always connected with greed, hate, or delusion. Hmm? And uh, when that level of greed, hate, and delusion is activated to a certain level, then only we want, we do something which we don't want society even to know. We just go suddenly and hide ourselves and do that. So that is, if that is happening, if that level of frequency in your greed, hate and delusion, there are dimensions which are equal to that frequency, low frequency, or higher in negative frequency, okay? And that level, those dimensions get opened up. And there are beings living in those dimensions. They get connected to you. So sometimes you wonder why there's such a driving force to do the negative things. If you have a driving force, for sure, there are these forces behind you. Suddenly you want to go to the club or to the bar or something. Or go to the, now no need to go there, the internet site. Okay, now I'm slowly coming to the... Uh, internet sites. This I have researched. It was very interesting for me. I mean, interesting means I never expected to give this kind of discourse. <laughs> From 2012, I never thought I am giving, but then I am, I am, see, it's coming to the modern period. We have, like, the discourse, the original teachings talking about the dangers of sensuality and, uh, you know, how, and uh, then how to, but they are just in a small, short and form. But now this has become so, you know, activated. And um, so, so when you're opening up this particular level to that pitch, you know that then how much you do these good things, suddenly you're putting it to mud, washing and putting it to mud like this. When you know like that, when you know there's an invisible forces driving you, they're going to destroy you or damage you, it should become graphic and visual to you. Because now this is the way I saw, now when I saw it to, for myself, it gave me an impulse to really keep away. If you think, no, this must be, you know, my destiny, I have to just overcome it, re release my pressures. You put all these, you know, justifying views to do sin. Otherwise you can't enjoy sin, you understand? <laughs> Remember these words, my friends. Otherwise, you can't enjoy sin. You have to enjoy sin, you have to justify it. You, don't, you love yourself, you don't want to harm or destroy yourself. But if, you, if it becomes very clear, this is going to really you know, ruin my life, then, but it has to be very clear to you and convincing, then you get the determination next time when the temptation comes to keep away. And uh, when you keep away one time, then another part of your brain begin get some life that willpower for self-decision. And in the, then second day, third day, like that, you keep away for some period. Then the parts of your brain which was damaged get repaired again. And when they get repaired, and then your character, holes in your character get patched up. 
So after some time, you happen, now there are so many ways of, uh, after some time, when you happen to meditate and get more purified tranquility, another type of hormones get formed in the body. But they are not, they are not called hormones actually, because they are not identified in the modern uh, system of study, so the medical science, it is actually called Ojas, Tejas, in the Ayurvedic. The Rishis happen to know about this. This is the opposite of those intoxications, detoxification. <laughs> From that, you begin to create uh, many moments of tranquility and uh, know when the special part of your human brain starts to work, not the special, even the normal brain, that secretes another type of thing. It is called endorphins, also positive, I think. Any doctors or medical endorphins? No? Yeah, but they are supposed to be uh, not, uh, they are positive subjects, not a harmful, right? Or endorphins, right? Who are runners they get? Okay, yeah, yeah, that's right. Aura, it makes you charming, it makes you strong. And that part normally goes to your brain and get deposited. The areas of brain which are not functioning before. And then they start to give you the spiritual drive thoughts again. So it's like a cycle. You create another cycle which rebuilds you and then so actually our body is also like a pharmacy. It has all this uh, ability to sort of create. So when we create this, open up those areas in the body then that, you know, that oja especially what we are mainly interested in is what helps us enlightenment. That part of the brain gets more and more activated. And normally when it goes, you can see in the body also the change, physiological change. There will be a shine in your Cheeks, the forehead. I normally tell, don't lose that shine or the charm. And uh, then you don't have to what, apply Nivea, no? Nivea you have? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In this part you have Nivea. I don't know, my grandma used to. Okay, okay. <laughs> Yes, you have a inside brain brain in you know, a factory inside a Nivea factory. <laughs> this is very important, my friends. This will give you that particular beauty. Even if you are very old, you look so graceful and so that's coming out of. Otherwise, you see some of the old people. When you look at them, you feel something, you know, because you can think what they are up to. I mean, you don't know. There's that inner sense coming about something. I mean, not the lipstick or some kind of this thing, you know, so looking dead. It's just the flesh look so obvious, you know, it's like it's just plainly flesh. But when you have character, that purity coming, that emanation of this, but, and this is something I believe, I don't know, <laughs> there's one, one gentleman I see from, uh, you know, some, some of the topics I like to sort of relate it to the present condition that you're staying in this place, you know. I was, compl I was told in, uh, in Berlin uh, that most of the Sri Lankans there, I don't know, but I heard in uh, England is a different, it's second, third, fourth generation, you know, I don't know, is it true? There's, there's some of them have stayed long time here and you know, all that. So I, I was told by one gentleman in Berlin is just one or two, I don't know, though that, uh, that they, the Sri Lankan community normally, they have normally mainly the problem is an inferiority complex. I don't know whether these are true. <laughs> and then the, the other people who have experienced mostly or they are staying or established with the material more affluence, they are having like a disillusionment. <laughs> like, like they've got everything and they're like nowhere yet, like back to square one. Sure, in sens sensuality. So it's nice to have a good marriage between both of them. You know, I always think that uh, this this is this illusionment. Um, so really, this both will disappear when you begin to enjoy self-realization, who you are, what this is, and self-control. Then you will separate yourself from this perception of this is these colors and forms and all these things. You will not solidify it. When that solidifying is not happening, you become not a person of this world. You understand? You become someone coming out of this particular world. This world is not a beauty. It is actually a muck. Muck means muck. Illusion. Ignorance. Egoistic. <laughs> and jealousy. Anger. It's that muck. That is the names of the types of muck in it. And you are creating something out of it. But when you learn to separate and kind of, you know, sort of see yourself, not identify, that's the real education. 
Now there are people who travel all over the world sometimes, they also become more broad-minded. Unless some who are untraveled or just staying in areas that they become so, you know, sort of, uh, it's also very unhealthy. Especially if they can't accept something which they are, is new to them, novel to them. It looks something, you know, threatening or something like that. So unless, so one must have more compassion if such a situation comes. But that you have to have the enlightenment for that more and more. If you only do a puja and <laughs> kind of this thing, then you know you uh, you still again it's okay. Uh, this, this, these things should be done. But the main thing is you must be a walking chaitya. You must be a stupa. That is means you must be perceiving. You must not see bodies. I don't know whether you heard. I've been the LTT area in 2003. I cut across the terrorist area in Sri Lanka. They have killed many monks. That time, as a wandering monk, I when I was going, so those time I didn't see them as LTT. I saw them as Panchupada five aggregates. Whatever I trained in the jungle, I, when I saw see the body, now even your, I would not think. Uh, I feel this is karma. So when you see like that, your way of reaction will be also different. You will, you will, and you will know later the mind had never existed. There are certain things you can get to know, it's, you have to analyze a bit, but this is also not the real understanding. But it is coming closer to an experience in by thinking, which the experience is beyond thinking. So that's why I tell you, don't make conclusions when you understand Dhamma in any form that uh, maybe I have now understood this Dhamma in the way. Because just see how your change in your life is happening by that. That's the only yardstick that is more reliable, whether you're getting less angry, less greedy, less irritated, more peaceful, more tranquil. So follow that way. But don't name it. No, don't name, you know, that uh, this could be, uh, you know, uh, something. You can never name it and just follow the path. So one day I heard uh, recently there was one boy, gentleman, uh, English gentleman, I think a young gentleman, he happened to tell how he became a monk, not a monk, I'm sorry, how he became um, a Buddhist. So I told you all, no, in the afternoon, or in that time, uh, he, they, uh, he has, she, I mean, he, uh, he always, even when he was a young boy, he seemed to have a liking to Buddhism. So then uh, he, uh, his, his mother was, he was telling a story what happened made him like, you know, there were flashes where he was attracted to Buddhism. So there's one his mother, uh, they had a shop, a small grocery or a boutique. And there they, you know, some people used to come. There was one lady, an Asian lady used to come and he used to tell, buy something and she didn't have much money. She used to buy some small, you know, not a very big thing. Every time she comes and goes. So then, but she, uh, she looked so happy also. So one day, he, as a small boy, he asked the mother, uh, who is that uh, lady, you know? Then uh, she said, she's a Sri Lankan. Uh, and then uh, he asked, why she looks so happy, you know? She's one lady I've seen always so happy. Because she's a Buddhist. <laughs> so this is a very good thing for you, all right? <laughs> I mean, really by your actions, by other don't disgrace this master. <laughs> um, this uh, you tell I'm, I'm something, I'm Muslim or something, you know, I, 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 yes, I, yes, no? <laughs> no, you're not telling a gun, if you carry a long face, it's worse than a gun, you understand? <laughs> long face is a very big problem, you understand? At least that we must lose. It is not easy, it's only by having the inner happiness. <coughs> if the inner happiness only, you know, the inner happiness only comes from purity, following principles, having good memories of your good deeds. Otherwise, uh, it's not possible to get that. And sacrifice, learning to find happiness in sacrifice, not to do whatever you want. Now, how many of you, I will tell here. Um, how many of you are married, especially women? I'm not trying to find a suit or something. <laughs> okay. Are you okay? Okay. Uh, your husbands are here? 
All of you, her husbands are here. They're not here. They're dead. Living. And they're not here. Okay. So if you're a real Buddhist, you'll become Christian to him. You understand? When you're with him, you'll be Christian. You know, a Buddhist is being like water. Whatever vessel you're put into, you become that. To make that situation happy. And, okay. Can you hear me now? You can hear, yeah, okay. Then it's okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I hope you get this point. And uh, does he, did he know that you're coming today? Did he say it's okay to come? How was it? Sorry? He's enjoying himself. He asked me, is there any point to go in there? I said yes. Okay. Because he wants me to join him to go and visit friends. Okay. And I said, no, I got the point. Right then. So he's going to see his friends. And did he say okay? It's all right? Like he was, okay. So you enjoy the session here, yeah, for sure. What about you also, no, auntie? There? Your, son, yeah, your husband is here? And uh, you're married, of course, yes. right? And where is he? He's at home. Okay. And uh, how did, did you tell you are coming here? And yes. what did you say? Oh, happy. Okay, then you will have a very good session here. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you some points. We don't get husbands, like even, you know, some people also search for gurus. I say many people don't, you know, go searching for gurus also like searching for husbands and wives. You never expected to marry that person, but you marry that such a person. You know, it's like something, you're not, it just happens. So even the parents you get, you know, there is some harm, destiny to you to get these particular connections. So I normally tell whatever, you know, in my case I have maybe pupils or devotees, or there are also some karmic connection. We call the karma, you know, karmic connection. So this... Now this is something it may be in words, but I, I don't know. I hope I don't know whether I have time to explain how it is. You must feel it happening. Don't believe it by some kind of blindness. <coughs> uh, so anyway, if your husband, I can predict like that. You know, if your husband tell you some way don't come, that shows your type of karma operating at that time. You're not happy in the supporting good karma or good supporting. So if you watch your life like an equanimity from outside. You will see if you go to that function or whatever, if you're honest and really studying this, you'll find you will not be successful what you're doing. Even you physically come, you understand? And you can see if you convince and then came, you'll have some struggles initially and it will work. Have you noticed these things? Okay, very good. Yeah, this is some understanding of life, you know, because normally we have learned um, very much to live only. We don't know the karmic terrain and just to study the life in how the patterns are working, how these relationships are connected with events. Hmm? So this, uh, you become more sensitive and observant of, uh, and you will take decisions very carefully, wisely. Wisdom is about that, understanding the mechanism of life. Hmm? Even hus wives and husbands you get, you, know, you begin to understand, but you must have a certain degree of detachment and a certain degree of discrimination where you study the situation and so okay i hope this is very important whenever you are taking life decisions so first it comes with parents that's a very strong best connection and then if you're married with and which you're working with bosses and so on but even if they tell you to do say, a sinful thing they are without anger but with firmness you should be saying no you don't take part in sin. It's not going to be good. It's only your... So you're not encouraging anyone. But other situations, uh, you must learn to become flexible and even to do things which you don't like, um, which is going to... So anyway, I have some points for the younger people also. I must share this quickly. So th then... Um, so when you, uh, that is in your general life how you take decisions, but your behavior wise, there's one occasion where one, I tell two things if you don't control, nothing happens on this path. This is repeating my other, this thing is, the tongue and the 
sexual organ actually. So you can see their stem, a lot of nerves with red, uh, you know, the blood and all that. The feelings are very strong. So these uh, restraining, controlling these, only many rules are given by the Buddha. If you look very interesting, you know, we have rules like grave offense and minor offenses. Now we think he has just formed those rules for some kind of for the organization to go harmoniously. No, it's for our protection. Very interesting, you know, like especially with the modern medical science findings, it very nice, very interesting, it makes you really feel have more faith. Especially talks about the grave offense at the level where, um, you know, the grave offense, he tells this, um, there are two levels, four, if you break, I have to remove my robes, this robe. There are other twelve which I can rectify. I can, you know, there's a purification process and sort of not keep it hidden, confess to my brother monks, senior monks, and then there's a way. So the first two, I don't know, you must be not be knowledgeable about it, is in the rules. The first, now he laid down these rules when this cropped up in the Sangha, in the community. It happened after 20 years. First 20 years, they were all becoming quickly enlightened. There was not this, uh, I mean, wrongdoings happening before that. They were all enlightened. Wrongdoings are coming out of a defiled mind. Too much passions, too much anger, too much delusion. So, initial 20 years, no. Then slowly, slowly, then he said, don't do this. Don't do that. This is under grave offense. Now it's funny. Now he said these rules are laid down for the future. Because the rules will be the ones that are, you know, protecting us for liberation as now this day and age. It was very interesting for me because how now those rules, I was also having a struggle, a lot of struggle, even because no one told us all these things. Even my teachers actually, they never touched this point in a detailed way. Uh, and if this was done, I would, I would have gone further, this thing. So on my own, I was researching. And it took long years. And with, um, so in South Africa, Lesotho, in international schools and all that. So one thing protected me. Those schools, you know, when they go, all I remember, uh, there used to be, you know, like a lot of mischief. And uh, they don't keep their virtue, nothing. And then I used to hear about this in class, when classes when they have gone to discos and all that. So I also like to go to the school disco, high school. But because shyness to ask my father money for the ticket, knowing my father, we wonder what he is up to. <laughs> that protected me. I didn't know I'd be a monk or whatever. I had this thirst for knowledge and search for truth. So I, I didn't, uh, so I used to sort of, and that others have never had so all these impressions and draining of energy. I would have not been able to pursue these so many memories of... Uh, so anyway, that time I didn't do all these things. But there are other things which I happened to, you know, like... Uh, because uh, because there is in the ancient time something called Kumar Brahmacharya. Have you heard this word even? You all have heard, huh? Okay. I don't know, you all are very... I mean, London is... This is London, right? I mean, uh, so... It, from the books, but at least you are reading a lot of books, very good. This is, I mean, okay. Do you know how it's defined? How? But it's a little bit difficult to explain, eh? Okay. All right. It's all right. But I'm so happy. You know, at least you are quite, uh, you know, the, uh, the Kumara Brahmacharya means it was known before you got married or whatever, you know. You practice a level of celibacy. Knowing the relationship of that, how it nourishes the brain and that, that brain fluid is you know, enhanced and that your intellectual powers will be. And uh, this was also later on studied. In, so these things after the industrial revolution and all this, even in the Christian tradition, it's very well understood and well known. This is the demon. Any other practices, its demon is involved. And the angels of, you know, the, not the angels, the other evil spirits are involved with it. So leave alone all that part also. But these things were known in, in Sri Lanka in the past, I'm sure, but this all lost. So this is something I find that is very interesting, but out without any religion or anything, there in the West there are groups like vegan, no? Vegan or like that uh, sticking to vegetarian what is it, vegan is 
uh, greens and things like that. Like that, there's a group that has formed who are sort of practicing these things, you know, on their own. They're counting the days because this is a challenging thing. Because today, the modern day, they are falling into habits. It becomes a habit, the wrong things. And addictive habits. And so this way, they have to count the days. How long did I practice this? Three days, one week, two weeks. It's wonderful. They have sometimes said 90 days of uh, this particular practice. So there's a group of these people. And I thought the Sri Lankan people in Sri Lanka, they should know better now. Because I wish the schools and everybody get to know. And uh, so in the YouTube, I don't know, this is called... I, I don't know because all of you are so knowledgeable in a certain way, you might even know. I like to tell to another audience. But doesn't matter, it's sake of truth, you know, and to know the... For the younger people especially, it's called NoFap. N-O, F-A-P-P. -P. Any one of you know what I'm telling? No, huh? Then when I get into the Heathrow Airport, you can get to know about it. Okay? <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> okay, no, no one knows, sir. Eh? Oh my goodness. So in O. Okay. And you did you refer and you find out what it is about, no? I learned about it from you. But did you check it in the YouTube and on the one? Oh my goodness. Why? You are not taking these points, you know? Mm -hmm. Just you got to know I told like that and you don't know what is in, in, uh, contained in that, nothing, no? So it's regarding this Kumar Brahmacharya, okay? And uh, these things never taught us in the school or anywhere, unfortunately. So it, these mistakes go when I was 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, even while doing social work. I have met this gentleman elderly and they just asked me this question and they said, oh, no one taught us this. They are in ashrams doing, you know, like Katina Pingamas and Bodhi Puja, guiding a lot of people. And they got to know that I'm a little bit, you know, open and I, I could, they could ask me anything. And they put this question. I said, this is a big damage. So normally I tell, getting married is also like becoming a monk. Because you stick to one person, how boring that person is, it protects you from greater sin. You understand? So this is where, this also, these are very important. Some people ask how to develop my meditation. I said first settle your loans. <laughs> and, and, and then first learn to treat your wife kindly. And forgive uh, the relationships you're having. This, this is my approach. So you just, you know, you never have a solid. So is getting married is also like becoming a monk. You stick to one person, how boring that person is. It protects you. In case some mistakes you have done, know that there are those evil forces connected to you. That's why they are driving you to evil. Because they are fallen souls. Remember this. And these fallen souls drive you, they will bring you to... Because they are not in a... They are suffering. They are enjoying it through their body. Through your body, I'm sure. Um, so, I will explain that very much. Uh, so, this is very important. Um, so, so this is called NoFab. I hope you can check it out in the YouTube, especially for the younger ones, about 14. I hope this will be very good knowledge and uh, sort of a, opens up a way that you will recognize. I wish this was told to me when I was a young boy, really. And um, But uh, well, that is the level of karma I had. So that you can, you know, utilize your life. It's not for many... Uh, protect your life and bring its full, fullest potential. So there, I'm getting so many, I'm trying to explain you all, so many points come into my mind. And uh, so this is very important. And keep, as I told you, two parts of the thing. And in these rules by the Buddha, very interesting, the grave offense part, as I told you, it was only done in few people those days. Now there's not a person who is not caught up with this particular mistake. So this is very relevant in a way. And with this, when you activate this particular type of emotions, and it opens up a completely opposite side of your existence. It is a completely a negative side and it touches all side effects, anxiety, paranoia, 
All this comes out of feather brain, I call it. This also happened. You can't do something, something. This, this. You just can't do it. Did I put it into my bag? Check it again. Check it again. Is the cell phone there? Is the keys there? Keys there? It's there already. Why are you looking at the game? Uh, there, there, there. It's like the. I don't know whether it happens to you also. Right? <laughs> so, but uh, this is uh, sometimes the uh, the the brain. Then which so much? So it cannot. It can be only in other forms also. Too much energy lost even to um, children, family. And also not managing your mental energy. Hmm? Uh, so the other, I want to touch this quickly. So when sometimes this addiction, this, uh, these things when they are driving you, there are certain beings who get interested in the muck that has been created. You know, the muck is created in the body, type of hormones which they eat that day. You know? Now I will explain how we now I must come to how it is found. Because this is another entirely which relates to the MRI scan, very interesting. Uh, you know, there was one like a rishi, I don't know whether you know, like a saint, a rishis. The rishis, they like, uh, they have some mental power through samadhi. So in the Himalayas sometimes, mostly they are there, some of them in the past, they were now, they are also less. So, because of this modernizing, it's all becoming corrupt. So anyway, there's one person, I happen to have some contact, who had some power, where they, he could bring those invisible forces, beings, who are following you into the body of the person. Now in front of you also, there are, but if certain beings are against completely, they would have stopped you from coming completely. But uh, uh, sometimes when the last, in the, uh, later when I'm giving my blessings, maybe, you know, the, but who are able to get the, you know, your, your ancestors who died with attachment, so they didn't die. <laughs> Who, who had so much desire, they couldn't leave you completely. So normally they create the desire to you. Some have done also pink commas and good deeds. But uh, they had desires. So to children, to households, to cars, to their career. So they didn't clean it by enlightenment and purification. That is really following the way to enlightenment. Sadhukan so on and on. They didn't travel that way. So what happened? They have done good deeds. We are surprised also. If someone tells they are now still in a stuck state, they can't imagine. Now sometimes that they have kept, if it's worse than that, it will be like a dog, for example. Now this might look a little bit like focus focus for some people. Anyway, uh, if he's born like a dog, also you know with all comfort they have been. So it's very interesting, you know. They are getting the comfort, everything, the good karmas they ripe, but the state is. So the consciousness, the last moment of dying moment, how if it triggered by anger, and you will get angry when you can't achieve what you, when you have to leave what you like. When you don't get what you like, it turns to anger. You know, especially when many people who are quite old and they are not practicing the spiritual path, you know, they are in a, always in a very bad negative mood. Because they hate life. They can't do what they were doing. And if they have no particular training or any practice of this kind, then especially, I mean, what a dreadful state. Where was I? You know, I suddenly, I have the biggest forgetting the problem. <laughs> okay, thank you. So then, uh, uh, so these beings are there, this one particular Rishi, he was able to, you know, sort of bring those beings, you know, I witnessed this one time, uh, who were hiding behind you. So one parent, one mother actually, her son was going astray and was not listening to her. So she uh, brought this son to this person. So that time uh, he used certain force, certain power, and he made uh, this certain, uh, you know, like suddenly this boy, the young boy became unconscious. Someone else was speaking. I don't know if you've ever seen like this, anything like that. No, never, no? I've seen these things, no? Okay. So it's like, you know some of the Edgar Casey, many mentions, you know, he used to go into an unconscious state. You've heard about that. But uh, in this case, of course, it's like another entity speaking. Now, many things got revealed through that. 
the, he said, I am owning this body, I am using this body. I, and uh, and then this, uh, the saint asked, the Rishi asked, uh, uh, how long are you here? Some of them said, some of them I remember they said, uh, when he was 12 years old, I came to his body. And how? Then he was telling, he was surprised me, when he was playing games. I was also shocked by that, you know. And another place they say by Facebook. But I will tell you games, you know, I was wondering how it is happening. Now I understand because now when, when you practice compassion meditation, karuna, compassion, good positive thoughts to the whole world and spreading, then you are sort of making the consciousness into a greater consciousness. Hmm? And uh, that is a positive thought and a stronger thought. And that thought makes that particular type of cognizing, that intention, I mean. So when that is done, so when you have other intentions, kill, kill, fire, fire, or something, you know, some other, you know, meaningless, no real meaning, you know, when you are doing like that, then surely it also has to form another consciousness. You understand? So, so then we can understand logically also that way, how when that is happening then, those, this is very rational. So somebody told me once in a while they also you know go to movies and all that. <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's okay, right? I don't want to. <laughs> it's, uh, but uh, it's okay. I mean, I'm not telling you all to. That's it. even I also in Nicosia is that was my only entertainment. Uh, going to a movie and it was expensive those days. I don't know two and a half pounds or something. You know, they are in the long as a student. Uh, yeah, I also didn't know. So, but anyway, uh, any later, if you want to train your mind, you should, you should start from smaller, grosser things. Where you are, you know, you must see the immediate where you are doing the damage. Definitely, about no fab, you must really rectify immediately. This is my. Now, even now, I told you before, marriage is like becoming. I mean, um, like becoming a monk. Why? You focus on one person. And you sort of, you know, uh, then you not allow the other, that was sacred, that was made like that. And finally, if you are really meditating and practicing, it is to create a child. Only this connection should come. You come out of this illusion. More you sort of, uh, you know, uh, grain these things, you enjoy that pressure in any form. Then you can't reach any other higher consciousness. You are so tired. Your energies are all gone. You, this needs some super energy to get those thoughts and to keep focus and then only you take off. Do you get this picture? This is a big new medi uh, banner teaching I'm telling now, but I'm getting a clear picture of it. So uh, this you need that energy and the greater the pressure, the greater the energy loss. Greater you feel tired. After a good meal you enjoy. You feel tired. That's why the tiredness makes you sleepy and angry, irritated. So, this is something you have to understand. So, if something you can keep away for three days, one week, like that, you must start. And you must take a photograph of you or look at, in, look at yourself in the mirror. You see physical change or something, you know, you, you should know tangibly some benefit is happening. Otherwise, you can't, you know, really continue this kind of thing. And you must fill in some knowledge and so on. So that, you know, you get weapons to handle this because this will come in different forms. So the other thing, you have to also, there's a nice story, you know, there's a book written, I don't know whether you ever know about this, that how to find a perfect husband. There's a book written by one famous uh, author and how to find a perfect wife. Have you ever heard about this book? It's not out yet, I don't know. No? <laughs> okay, <laughs> but at least for knowledge sake, that's okay, <laughs> and to have good memories. <laughs> and there was this particular, they say, I don't know whether it's out here, and uh, there's one, this gentleman, he happened to go to get this book, CNNA or somewhere, in South Africa, I guess, and it's out now maybe. And then he went to, he couldn't find it, so he had to ask the cashier, you know, where is this uh, book, How to Find a Perfect Wife? Then he has said the fiction section. <laughs> 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 yes. 
you know. So it is a fiction. So you, this, if you have this wisdom and idea, you will not, you know, otherwise at the age of 80 you will have your marriage again, another one, another one, another one. The body is the thing, the consciousness is still searching for fulfillment. The unenlightened consciousness is searching for a fulfillment in a dream. So it's like drinking, you know, salt water for thirst. It's, so many examples are given. No person is quenched by, you know, again, and the sensual world is like that. And you go into the reality of it, it is more you go into, the more the suffering will be, more the trauma, more the... Because it's not what you achieve, but whether you're getting what you are going behind. It's you're weakening yourself, even the smallest things don't satisfy you. You need higher dosages, same with games and addictive things. You have to give a higher one, higher one to feel. <laughs> and if you don't turn, you turn and turn back, you know, you will, you're going in a destructive uh, this thing, you will not look at for principles or anything like that. And uh, let me see whether I covered some of the points. Uh, internet also, there's some of these beings, uh, Facebook, they said they enter through Facebook one place. I don't know. So you might know, you know, wherever you find you're getting addicted or you want to look at the comments, so I don't know. Taman told me, these are all addictive, this thing definitely. This, uh, this forces have entered you. The one place they say, one person says that uh, in one when I was with this Rishi, you know, that how when they enter, they very th many things are revealed, it was very interesting. Like, uh, how was it? Uh, when they press that particular page, you know, that page, when they press that particular, I don't know, open that page maybe, you know, open that page, that they are in my control, our control. So you don't have to open it. <laughs> when you get the thought to open, start to work in your brain and just you go into it. You forget about Bhante gave a speech about these things. You think, no, today I will, my last enjoyment, tomorrow I start. Right? It, that the tomorrow, tomorrow story will happen. No, not with me, no, something will happen to you all. You are not going to meet me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, this gentleman who was bringing me here also, he was telling me, Pante, I never I got caught to such a traffic block, you know, when he was picking up. I said, yeah, I'm the surgeon who is coming to operate, so many things will be disturbed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I expect this, you know, I definitely, I'm not, I'm not coming out of some curiosity or for some enjoyment. <laughs> so I'm quite serious about this matter and I hope definitely it will, if it's positive for you all, I hope it will happen to you all, that you are not drawn to any kind of sin or negativity. Yeah. And so, so when I told about this, you know, the, the negative forces, sometimes in Melbourne, some of the young boys, they, you know, they have no idea, you know, sometimes they are like, uh, they are telling me, Bhante, I'm not doing these things, but they are doing something else which is like saving a mosquito and uh, killing an elephant. <laughs> this, they do something like this in Melbourne city. They are drawn to these temptations. Suddenly, but he remembered, oh, the Bhante sword, certain negative forces drive you. And they must be with me and that stopped him. I, I was thinking how relevant it is, you know, to... Uh, he want to be a monk and all these good ideas are there. But they are never going to be materialized. If he's going to go on and on, and especially these people who are destined for great things, they are more captured by these forces. This must be known. So you can't label these people, they are born bad or something. No. They may be the chosen beings. So the very demon is following completely around them. So if that is removed, they will become the saints of saints, for sure. So this is very important. And many addictions could come from internet. And as I told you, the working of this particular, you know, this... Uh, no, the internet is not a problem, it's a neutral thing, it's just a machine. Now, we were talking also about that, the vehicle, for example, you know, that can be used to come for this kind of thing, or it can be used to go to a nightclub or somewhere. Now I remember, in England or London, there is Soho, Soho, Soho. <laughs> okay. My father told me something, I remember now. Okay. When I was a young student, when I was about to go, he told all his experiences and to be careful. 
My memory is coming now. <laughs> okay, suddenly maybe you want to drive your vehicle to Soho, right? <laughs> okay, that is then surely the demon is there. Or the negative. You have to think then, then you know, it's destroying me. You know, I am being manipulated. By, uh, otherwise you think, no? You sort of justify it in some form. And you, because you want to enjoy the sin, it's enjoyment always, that's why you want to go behind it. And unless you know that very concretely and very convincingly, not that if you are not convinced also, you, you don't be, but you will notice it if you are really honest and studying yourself, that you are out of control and something is driving me. You will notice that. And then you can make a break. So the computer is not a problem. It is that you have to be careful, you should know what is. you can use for spiritual things, you can use for some inspiring, many things you can get, this is information technology. So, uh, you know, you can get so many uh, uh, things like that, but you don't need a lot of knowledge also, you know. You must be choosy of getting the, because you don't have much time in this life. That is one thing. And uh, other thing is certain fantasies. You know, like we get addicted and certain memories come and we want to enjoy certain, they are called, you know, like you want to, we are enjoying a certain fantasy. Hmm? How to overcome that, practically? Now all things are fed by illusion, ignorance. Hmm? Now especially with the internet, you will have, I know it's a timely topic, some things, you know, like you are addicted so much and you just can't, uh, now you may keep away by some promising to the Buddha or something, now this is also effective, but that inner inside drive is there, like you are missing out on something. Or oh, you want to do it. Why is it there? Because you are still, you know, having the fantasy. The fantasy is not being broken. So what you do, when you are at rest, when you are not being driven, you must bring back those memories. You understand? Consciously. If there was some picture or something or some area, you and what a certain episode that went through in your life regarding this addictive, when say when you went to the bar, when you met the people, I'm telling you that way, right? Or some other thing. So you go back to that, what happened to you, how you entered the bar, how uh, the driving force was there, how the mind was working, how you started drinking, what happened to your brain, who you met, how you felt. You just go on through that. Don't think it's simple. And then go how you had the, what do you call it, not after effects, it's called what? Hangover. Hangover, <laughs> okay. <laughs> the hangover. And all that, go through that feeling. Just do it. And you will see, it makes a big difference. Later, the same fan, that idea, with, because you will be noticing when you go like that, without the experience. With equanimity, when you are going through, you will notice things you didn't notice before. About its reality. And that will create a new pathway in your brain. And you'll find it will destroy that slowly the kind of, you know, ah, something. Oh, the shocking thing, shocking. That's what creates the dopamine rush. And this is, this way, that energy will also be fade away from your system. You get this? Especially for the younger ones. I mean, in case, I don't see some of you are okay. But better be, I hope, better know about the crocodile, you know. <laughs> all his fans and and if you want to be more handsome as I told you more night, I mean I remember in, when I was in high school I could recall, see my classmates they were all looking like they were maybe 16, 17, 18, 19 but they looked like 25, 30 that's that uh, I would also notice them before they were quite good and they suddenly I see them meeting certain group of people and then be driven to that and I can see the change happening their looks, everything, you know, they become pale and... So it's also nice to get strength from the ancient saints and sages. This is still I do for my own inspiration. How they kept truth and honesty. I mean, even, you know, some of the Christian saints, they're similar to what the Jatak Kata. Have you heard of Joseph? Joseph, Prophet Joseph. Beautiful story. Maushada Pandita. Direct, straight away. I mean, leave alone how he had chastity, how he had this uh, uh, wisdom, how he guided the Pharaoh. You know, I mean, anyone was fascinated by his life. How can you get that fascination? One main thing was chastity. 
Now, even today in the relative world, even who are sometimes few, uh, who are controlling to a certain extent, they have a special charm. And that's why someone tells Bhante, when I'm trying to be chaste and practice these things, more ladies are coming to me. Yeah, initially it's true. <laughs> so this is true in a way. But then you learn, you know, that is a test for you to pass. And then to make it permanent, is otherwise the vampire story. It will suck all your power. So one thing there are practices to done, do to control how to control these things. As I told you, I can look at you like this, and I can. I'm all now. Most of the time, I'm not looking like this. I'm not focused, right? Do I look focused when I'm looking like this? Can you see my eyes? Do I look focused? Now, I look focused. Now, yes. Now, no, right? Now this unfocused way of having the senses is called Indriya Sangharasida, the practice. Now in practice, if you want to control, you can't just pray, I want to control, control. That won't happen. When you're driving the car, when you're going out, these are the steps, the practices you have to do to, uh, uh, you know, that it becomes a practical thing. So if you, then your monkey mind will stop and you learn if you're walking in the street, you learn two people are coming but you don't recognize who they are. Yeah. You cross the road, you see the vehicles properly but you don't have to see who is inside the vehicle. So this you learn too because mostly it's just a simple thing it looks but it registers in the mind. That is one of the practices to, to it will enhance your tranquility, your meditation. Your sitting meditation, when you sit down after practicing that, you will have less disturbing thoughts. The other one is called Iriyapate. Iriyapate means your physical movements. More you go being not being in the present moment, unmindful, more you are losing energy. So leave alone um, having no tension, you know. I mean, leave alone meditation, you will not to have tension or anxiety is another big problem. To drive, you know, in a calm, in a un, uh, calm way or a com comfortable way without being too anxious or whatever, uh, that is also a comfort these days. To do a simple activity. So I find in Milan, one lady I was with, they, she flew from there to what was this place, Berlin, for the program there, and she was going through a great crisis, and she has gone through this, uh, some of the YouTube, this thing, and I was very happy. I mean, I was so happy that she just mastered this in a certain way. I have told, you know, she had taken the past. I never do retreats, only one retreat. I told them, don't allow me to do retreats at this stage in Australia, where I do the walking meditation, how I teach them, how you first start like going on a holiday or just window shopping. You get that mentality. Otherwise, you go with a sort of a tense way to do the meditation. There's already a block for your meditation. So you learn to, so my time is up, or how is it? Two of us? Is it? You feel tired, any of you? Uh, any of you in the back? Raise anyone, little bit tired, anyone you feeling? Don't you feel this is kind of a miracle? Some energy has gone to you, right? <laughs> if you stay like this, you have eaten my up drugs, you know? <laughs> Yeah, it is, uh, uh, it's, it's, you'll find that, you know, there's something like a natural something, you're just there, right? There's no, uh, uh, anyway, I will tell, what, what was I telling just now? Yeah, there's this lady, Milan. So she, she, very interesting, you know, she thought now when she's going to catch the train or the, you know, this thing, she realized, okay, let me think when on a holiday, without a day, how will I go? How will I walk? Let me do that. So she has tried like that and just to feel the steps while she's walking. And anchoring the mind again and again to the moment, you know, what is happening. And building up that mental energy. And then you physically move but keep the mind at peace. So this is called Iriyapate. This is also going to affect when you sit down, how you feel tranquil. At least you notice your legs moving when you're walking. And more better if you can feel the touch of the... So like now without slippers, I got you, when you would ask sometimes, Bhante, why? 
you don't have slippers or whatever. I think once a captain in the plane once asked, they noticed suddenly, I said, well, uh, I'm more mindful. And I'm mindful of my walking, actually. And it's unconsciously mindful. When you had all the sleepers, you are unconsciously mindful. Because you have to be. Something pricks, you always, it becomes, you know, you will be noticing it. So there's that unconscious constantly, you'll be noting uh, how you're stepping. And that makes a natural, you know, you, you, it's a big difference. You wear shoes and walk. Sometimes in the Himalayas I have to wear tracking in the snow, ice, glacier and all that. Then uh, I see that uh, very different. You know, you're just in walk. I call that the animal walk. <laughs> just walk, you're thinking of something, and just your eyes there, mind there. Eyes there, mind somewhere, <laughs> and the body somewhere. So when you go like that, you are in such a stress, my friend. Because your brain is shrinking day by day. And stress, it can't handle it anymore, and just you can't, uh, you know. So this is to take one thing at a time. And to feel the water when it's touching, when you're washing. Just the immediate things. And another way to see whether you have come to the present moment is, uh, we can do this exercise just now a little bit. Just don't meditate, just relax now. Are you relaxed? No, you are not, don't meditate as such. Just sit, be seated as you are. Were you not relaxed all this time, that means? <laughs> now you are falling into a position. Sorry. You should have been meditating while you were listening to me. That is how it should be done. If you didn't do it here, how will you do it in your cooking place or in the kitchen, in your office or in your working place. This is how it should be done while you are doing the activity. So otherwise, it's no, it's nothing, you are not touched the med If you are really meditating, you will not feel tired in your activities. You will cook, you will do your day-to-day -day chores or whatever without feeling tired. And that is a sign, you can, if you drive the car without feeling tired mentally, you have meditated. You feel tired means you went beyond your boundary. That means you went to what does not exist. To future too much and the past. Anticipation, expectation. But that doesn't going to make things better. It only you know, destroys you within. Because it, just by doing that, if it makes the thing what you expect it to happen more, it's a great thing. Even things that might not happen, might happen. Miracles happen when you learn to remain in the present moment. Because the mind is a creator of events. I mean, all of you must be working a lot, so I must tell this also a bit, maybe it might help you all. So the NoFap, I hope this will help you much. And using the internet, be careful. This is all, you know, I have told already. Because that is very much used. They are going interrelated, interconnected. Uh, because the de uh, those forms get easily way of operating through this and you will not you will at least get an idea um, so, uh, yeah in once um, this I'm only creating a ground work well, we have a program at 7 30. <laughs> Wait a minute. So I think I've given you all enough points, you know. Only thing I want to know that uh, if you want to practice this Dhamma, now finally all this is to create character and the foundation. I have been talking all this time. To create the proper atmosphere for greater insights and knowledge. So normally if you want to really understand the proper Dhamma, I think you should refer to my YouTube. Clips. And I'm sure you will get some experience in the highest enlightenment. So do you believe what I spoke just now? Yes. You did, eh? So to follow something, to follow something, you know, it's like a journey and going to a destination in a map. So what is the surest way to go to one place? Or find from somebody who has gone there, right? Because he will know the way how to go. So, you think I have gone to such a place? How do you know? Because my face is shining? 
Maybe I put extra Nivea in the room. Right? But how can you still know? I mean, my experience I did speak okay, alright? Maybe I repeat, I memorize some experiences somewhere and making an act here. I don't think so, okay. But still, enlightenment, there are so many teachers, so many types of discourses, right? How can we know that if we follow that alone? I mean, the effect of it, so normally we can't read the mind, this enlightenment or effect of it is internal. So we can't see that what has happened to that person's mind, the teacher, and so we can't even read a normal thought in the person. So leave alone, uh, you know, something deep in us. So, um, so when this particular, when we, of course, some inspiration you can get from the YouTube, I tell you, but don't rely on that. We have to know from who's the authority. So the Buddha, the Buddha is not the statue only, it's discourses. It's like a big map. So it's, not, it's important for you to refer it separately. It's also a meditation. And then you learn to apply those, not all, most of the discourses, there's a way. He will, it's there like signpost. They help you to sort of look at the world from a certain way. But it is something not in an area somewhere separate. It's something where you bring it to the present moment and watch. So that's why he tells in a very simple, plain way. It doesn't look very complicated. But the experience is profound. So first you learn not to think and then think. It's something like that. So for not thinking only, I was telling you all the ways, all this time, how to tranquilize your mind, come to more tranquility. And another story I remember in Australia, some of them, you know, they want to know how to meditate while they are doing the work. So while we were driving only, he was asking me, Bhante, so I was thinking how many times I'm going to explain this. So I'm going to demonstrate this. <laughs> so I thought I just had touched his head like he was driving there. And then I was holding his head, I said, now relax. And uh, luckily, there's no policeman watching us. Otherwise, maybe some hijack or something, they would have thought. <laughs> I, was, I just touched his uh, head like this. And I said, just relax. Take a deep breath and allow the tension to go away. Just watch the necessary information to, just to drive. Feel the seat. Hmm? Feel how you're seated. And I could see his hands were like this. Then we can relax like that. It's a simple thing. Just, you know, that you're getting this uh, simple relaxing. It makes a big difference in your life. It makes a big difference. So this, I hope you try it out. Mm -hmm. And in the mornings, if you can do this exercise, center yourself and start your work. I mean, none of you, I'm sure, don't start your work without washing your face, brushing your teeth in the morning. This is the, just a physical freshness. So mental freshness, if you learn, and if that also, it will become addictive and it's a good addiction. And your life quality will change to another level, higher level. So important thing I would always tell to refer the, directly the words of the Buddha, some translation, there's word of the Buddha by Nyarati Loka Mahathir, small book, I recommend this, it's a structure. And uh, then there is like uh, Bhikkhu Bodhis, Middle End Discourses. So this is important, one page you can read. If you don't understand, skip to the next one. Like that, what is interesting, note it down. So you're feeling those perceptions and it will echo in your mind. Otherwise some conversation will echo, which you had about some John, Tom, Dick or Harry. And then when you're driving, you remember those things are going on. So if you read those enlightened words, enlightenment is working while you're driving. And you're not forgetting and suddenly how, how to, you know, say the truth and to be honest, all that. So you fill your life with this information and your actions will go according to that. So the other thing is just not reading. There are spaces where regarding the five elements, the five skandhas, they have to be practically applied, my friends. I know there are, for the program, they come and I demonstrate how to practice these particular five elements. And some of the, that is from the sutta I take and I demonstrate how to apply it. And, uh, and these people, uh, these, some of them, very interesting, when they have gone home, 
uh, with their husbands, you know, when they were scolding them in the kitchen or somewhere, she was able to see, this is not my ear, it is made out of elements and it's just a vibration. Not seeing it objectively, seeing it subjectively. And, uh, and that way she has not reacted. Beautiful. This is what I'm, what I, what you, when you read, you must learn to apply, see your life through that. Then normally, like cutting the hair I was telling, you will see that it's a concept, there's no you there. When you're having those perceptions, you should not artificially bring it. You should notice those things. That is the only moments where you have been really living. All other moments in your life are dead moments. <laughs> and if you allow that to go on, just a waste of time. Actually, one program per day would have been okay. <laughs> because uh, it's okay. It's all right. And uh, so I will just demonstrate something small, a, a small meditation. And uh, we can do that and then the blessings. Any questions you want to ask? So oh, the other, yeah, then you have, uh, you must take those words, keep it in your, in your bedside, read them. Now, that is one way. You know, uh, the interesting thing is, I will tell you, if you're, now if you're coming from Sri Lanka's tradition, then the Asian people, you know, they're normally worried about the Bhutas, Pretas and all that. I will tell you what happened with that rich, that um, gentleman. When he, those spirits were telling when, you know, holy water, this what it is, Piritvatura, uh, you know, that was the thing we are burning, burning. I was surprised, no, I would never recommend all these pujas and all these rituals, never. But I see some, you know, the practical side of it, after that, after I witnessed that. And another place they say, what was it? Don't tell the name of that uh, person. I, uh, we, we were like nearly, we were nearly facing like death. To see chanting of this uh, Pali, the sutras, chanting. So, I mean, this, I mean, I, what I witness, I have to relate it with that. So this, this has some effect of that, no doubt. And another time, just saying, don't touch that book. You know, when they were touching and reading that book, one of the other people, they were, they almost, they died. Some of them, they died. This is reading the, the sutra and uh, sort of contemplating. <coughs> You have never seen, heard from this angle, right? <laughs> so though I'm telling for others, because otherwise you might think you have to wear talismans and all this. So you can see the effect of this. There's so much. That's why we know when you have the visions, it uh, you know rejuvenates your destiny entirely. Like Lord Sakka, you know, he was about to leave his life. He came to the Buddha in the Tavatim Sadeva Loka. He died. I mean, not he died. I'm sorry. He listened and he became Sotapanna. What happened? His life became extended. So the material benefit is also definitely there. So it's all in all, but it depends from whom you get advice. If you get advice from the original master, he will give you that advice. If you get someone fallen below that, he will give you according to that. Now some people in their problem, they have drunk a little bit and it created some peace. So when a friend comes with a problem, he tells, just have a little bit of this. <laughs> so this is how you know what you how you have got you know a liberation or feeling of some ease you recommend to others. So we do a small meditation, okay? And something you want to ask before that, because then you're going towards winding up slowly. I have two programs today. So <laughs> normally I tell it to be over dosage, you know. It is uh, normally I take give one per day or once a month, and this is like. Uh, but uh, anyway, this is I am now my duty. This whole trip, the yeah, America, then okay. And so while I'm here, anything you all want to ask? Or the Dhamma or something? So, how is it? to go and listen to the YouTube, this thing, it will make you enlightened or how is it? What do you think? What is your answer now? Yeah, now normally it is said to attain Sotapanna, eh? you need four factors. These are the causes for attaining, to becoming enlightened. To, to uh, meet a person who is enlightened, 
at least. Sadpurusha Samseva, not a normal friend. Saddhamma Samseva, then you hear the enlightened words. And when you hear his words, then you meditate and deeply reflect. It's called Yoniso Manasika. And then you practice according to that. Dhammanu Dhamma Padipatya. If you are doing these things, in only praying, you will automatically become enlightened. So, but only problem is how to know the person who is who are teaching. So Buddha tells a way that his teachings will be the master after he leaves. Even if you hear so much famous someone is like this, like that, then I'm also getting popular and that doesn't mean I'm enlightened. Michael Jackson also was very, you know, famous, <laughs> most famous. So when you look like that, it's not like that. It's a certain type of karma. So um, you have to see so the person has to be at least enlightened. So the Buddha's teaching, you know, it comes from a Buddha. So when you reflect that and practice according to that, for sure. So you're not missing anything. You must keep the books. And if the monk is really sincere, he will direct you to those very original words. That means he also has some personal experience through that. But if he is still researching and he's still studying and he's having, so his, uh, you know, ideas will be, lim uh, you know, relative. The way he sees clearly now, he explains that. So there's such a way of teaching, will, he will recommend you to go through his teaching to get that. That is correct from that standpoint. But I'm telling what you'll be exposed now in, you know, in the world today. So this is what I learned from my teacher also, that if they're sincere, they will direct you to the original sutra and make you independent. Not dependent on, because I'm, I can guarantee also in my own personal practice, that if you have a vision from those words, it could be just a few sentences that it triggers that insight. It's not like a scholar, you should read these things. It should become where you meditate a little bit and read. Meditate, read, both together. There you are sure you are you know, paving your way to that practice. Dhammapada, Pranarathera. I mean, this is one good thing knowing English, you see. The translations are very good in English. The word of the Buddha, Dhammapada, by Narada and Bhikkhu Bodhi, Samyutta Nikaya, Majjhima Nikaya, Nikaya. They look, they are too little big, you know, the new will think like a novel you have to go through. No, one or two pages is one sutta. You can just open it from anywhere and read also. And then you are directly connecting to the Master. Otherwise we know a Buddhism of a, what has been, uh, I mean, uh, sort of, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's not the real one, real thing. You have to get brainwashed and go to that original words. It's simple, but it's enlightening. There are times when the monks, they were cutting their ordination time, cutting their hair, they became enlightened. <laughs> they are just, just so suddenly. So it's not something that you have to see it order in this way, that way, through Abhidhamma and this and that. That means they are not understood yet in an experiential way. At least in other ways, there has to be the behavior changing. It's not just only... Um, there has to be the behavior of both to should go the actions and that's the only very concrete way at least you know there's something really happening in the practice. So I tell you it's better you can even go to a Muslim mosque or even to a bar if it makes you pure or tranquil. Better you go there. You come to a temple and you have a long face, no point. Abul <laughs> Munak. Any question? Are you tired now? I can go on to three, four, five hours, but what can I do? Any any question before I sort of end up with the meditation? Any question? Mm -hmm. LSD and all that. Uh, even jhana, you know, we can name anything. Like, you know, we can name any kind of... Uh, I normally tell, don't name any of these things. Just take it as you had a tranquil feeling. That's all. Yeah, just feel tranquil, relax. And you had that, just to note like that. Because what you have read somewhere or heard, that don't label it. Because it might be, 
it's like the story of one, uh, in a way, one wife, you know, she wanted to prepare, I think, uh, what was it? Um, Kapta Sambol or I don't know, in Sri Lanka we have, what is it? String hoppers or something. But she, she uh, so the wife, husband said, uh, well, wife, uh, you, know, you can go and make, but we give the naming later, because she's not a good cook. <laughs> so same way, in a way, um, this naming all these experiences, let it be, actually. Let's see whether we can behave nicely even with our husbands, wives, children, and with, you know, there should be that, uh, you can at least, you know, like, uh, um, just some tranquility, at least, you know, tranquility. So this is important to know. That. I mean, I would never suggest anyone to, I think it's unhealthy where, uh, where they're teaching some places where uh, they're attaining and interviewing and all these things. But I don't want to go into that too much. But still, uh, uh, so it's better, I think, because you don't, even other insights, you don't name whether I got this, maybe Sota Pandya. These are all very dangerous then. You must see by way of seeing like this, now can I forgive another person? Can I let go of that memory? Can I let go of this uh, taste I'm going through now? in the food or something. Like that you have to practically put it into an experience you have gone through and then see whether it makes you to release it or let go of that. So then, then you're on the right track. And you become practical and you're changing yourself. Like this. Boring, isn't it? <laughs> I'm tired. Two hours of... Yeah, somewhere some people, they have no idea, you know. So they were surprised they were two hours, three hours in, where was it, in Italy. So that was for them, later they were wondering, this day, two hours? Oh, how did it happen? The kind of a talking meditation, right? So, so you told about Dhyana, no? That, uh, yeah, and the other one, what was it? Ah, uh, yeah, drugs you were telling me, yeah. Now, the drugs is a thing, you know, it stimulates a certain part of your brain without the... So it's there, unfortunately it's there for some time. I, I have no personal experience with that. So I already see these normal sense impressions as a drug for me already. <laughs> so, but uh, even... So actually I'm like a very heavily drug person. You see my eyes a little bit? <laughs> Drugged with some kind of, you know, um, yeah, it is a kind of, a, it's, but this is a healthy drug, I would say. It has no after effects, it has no temporary, temporary, uh, you have to, okay. so it, uh, there's no uh, side effects. The other one, I don't know, it is something, and it also makes you addictive, that's another problem. Addictive in the sense, which is in a destructive way. Yeah, you, you must check yourself how it will slowly start to affect your bloodstream and how your appearance. By the meantime, you are hooked into it so much. And then you have to do all sort of sin to sustain that, to get the money and all that. I don't know, really. I I know that they have equated LSD and that there's that. Even sleeping tablets, I don't know, just, you know, to fall asleep also if you use like that. If you chant, they still relax, try that sleeping tablet where you chant and uh, chant a little bit, recite some good vibrations and feel the pillow when you lie down, feel the immediate things and wait, just noticing that, took you go into a nice sleep. Any other question? Yes? The first one I would suggest, we need a little bit something like a Nesta malt or a Milo, spiritual one. We are like, you know, all like, you know, like, okay, Anapana, quickly we focus, it has, it will give some quick thing. I would always tell, like, Buddha Guna, initially, not for long, qualities of the Buddha, or even saints and sages, where you will think of their qualities and nature, and, you know, you get, they give you a, like a, 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 a role, 
kind of uh, you know example to follow. And uh, this you you I mean you can find in any um, I do it for myself. You know, see, like you know, the Buddha, some incident. Maybe Mahatma Gandhi. You know that he, some of his doings are very much like he went to prison and he gives condition to release himself. Just imagine. I mean, how that's like a bodhisattva this thing. So if you leave alone all these cultural things and you take the effect. You know, then you can get those spirit and you get the accumulation of such lives with this master like that. Whatever brings you into tears. Then it will remove those blocks in your head and create the solid foundation for other meditation. This modern day, I think we need like that. So normally I say my programs are like a meditation, rock concert. That's how I, I try to do it. Hmm? So now a little bit, now here it was a little okay. Some places, they put it slowly. <laughs> because they have become so criminal proper. <laughs> I am like a, you know, uh, what is it? <laughs> A completely like a adhyatmika <laughs> vettekko a spiritual outlaw <laughs> yeah breaking all traditions and so on now in Sri Lanka it's a very tough thing for me uh, because they are so it's very difficult for them even the organizers it's a very tough thing for me I'm like a loner you know now even the YouTube they're frightened they're thinking whether something will happen so they're just waiting just waiting and seeing so many people who are timely happen to get the blessings and come out of it, it will be so. I will maybe make some changes as I go because this is time. Time now, immediately. Some people who are to be liberated, I'm sure they are getting some chance. And uh, it has to be unique also. If I'm doing what has been done, why am I coming here? Why was I born? <laughs> There's no purpose. <laughs> this is complete. If there's nothing wrong here, there's arahants, no need for us to. We should have been in heaven, no problem. <laughs> so, this is something wrong, it's gone. Some may have wrong. We are just now, these places should be filled with people like a hospital getting operated. These are like, you know, I don't know, like I call them the sunken, uh, sunken, um, it's like a sunken ship side, you know, we are not in a floating ship. Whatever activities we are doing, it's not, uh, you know, we can't be happy with that. Because I have, I also studied how, what happened to some people who have been living like this or waiting, what happened after death. The society, they have sort of told, oh, like, you know, they have become saints or something. But uh, what the reality is completely, like, an ocean is there where you can be reborn. Now, these stories are coming to my mind, which, and when you know like that, you, it's a big, you know, like, this you must it make you urgent. To make a striving. And uh, shall I tell you one? I don't know, it's just coming to my dawn, to my mind so strongly. There was a very, very senior person. He was a chancellor of some place and so on. But he admired me, he loved me, or oh, I mean, he felt my life so simple and in the jungle. So I happened to come to there, I would not tell names, it's not nice. So he's dead and gone, but anyway. So, and also he thought maybe I just come and like Superman, he was then having cancer. So, so everything will be solved and all that. So I visited him, I encouraged him several times. Just always give him some positive thought and went left. But you're so attached to the things he was owning. You know? And he died the last few hours before I happened to just visit there. And then he, um, so everybody celebrated, this. even the president in Sri Lanka, they was so connected to him that time, Rajapaksa, you know that. So they um, thought of uh, this thing, him like a saint, you know. He was a good person, good human being, I would say, but not a detached person, full of attachments, and he didn't even think he will die. He thought last me, he never accepted that. So many people today, it's happening like that. They don't believe they are going to die. They forget, they think, no. They don't uh, sort of worry about it. Not worry, they don't want to think about it. So then, when you go like that, when it really happens to you, you are born in a state where you are not dead, but you are dead. This is what happened. And of course, still, if I tell, I, I mean, I know the brothers, brother monks, oh my God. <laughs> okay. the people who are connected there, and uh, but I would you know I would not uh, but I thought just more than consoling the person I should have come and 
would it would be nice if I sort of give him uh, give this uh, sir all these things and just I would have told him in a harsh way. I thought that would have been better than because what happened? Then I studied. You know what happened after that particular birth? Waited for a few months. No birth properly. No consciousness forming properly. Then born into a womb of a you know a dog. So just we are meeting and seeing people like that. What happens next? So we think maybe we are doing a lot of good things and so on. If you are not overcome, maybe our child will be the cause for that attachment. And we are not going to be a relation who is going to help the whole family. No. We are already stuck in existence. So when we learn, when you are meditating, we should not be distracted about the surrounding. So we must learn to tran have that tranquil experience. We are, we are not worrying about the office at that time or the pressure will come to do this, do that. But we start now, slowly we are, we learn to, you know, to, that's a practice, that's a level, we have not started it, that's the pro started that properly. So we are, we are, you know, we are able to separate from, so that is Pudugune, this is also very important. The tears should come, that's another way, not the just worshipping thing, which I'm expecting. It can come from a song even. I know one, they're sometimes very meaningful, you know, like some who have stayed in very tough situations. They have genius, the mind gets opened up, you know. No more fear, no more pain. It's one song by, I don't know, someone, uh, it's, uh, it's some, so it could be, so you should be inventive, you know, you should be imaginative. Even something uh, there you are reflecting on the qualities of great saints or masters. Not the song alone, that should give you like an initial uh, enzyme or, you know, Fasten the process or give it to you a push, um, impulse, the initial start, not to go on listening to this or reflecting on this. So that's another not good. Just to start your meditation, you must have some inspiring, some verse or some song. I say normally, Mohini Beg is Hindu Karikamande. Just an idea, you know. So, a way of chanting certain things, they become boring, you find another things. So, you know, enjoy. You are going to Nibbana, not in, you are going to partying. <laughs> partying, you are going to Nibbana. This is a spiritual party. Tell you honestly, my whole life is like that. <laughs> I don't do it. <laughs> now he was asking me whether I am missing on anything. <laughs> yes, sorry. I, he had been in the car, he was having several, several questions. It was very really rare. So, for me also, I can understand. From a friend's point of view, you know, you'd wonder all these years how one of my friends took another path and how it is working for him. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so what happened, uh, so that is important. Then after that, I would think Buddha Guru Metta is a very nice meditation. And after Metta, we get to Tana Panasati. But this is the meditation moments when you are doing that. But the lifestyle is very important. Not to, I told you all the techniques of not to see things, careful what you're watching and all that, even tasting the food. Food is another main thing, a lot of energy is lost. So I explained in the YouTube in detail some more things about, you know, that will be long. Mm -hmm. And uh, so how they are working, how the reptilian brain is operating, and when it's operating, how you can't practice mindfulness strong enough. And uh, so this is very logical. So you have to, uh, so what, uh, you know, if, I, if I talk all these things, it's a long, it will, that's why normally four hours it will go, but these points are there, I covered I think most of all of you. If you really want to meditate, uh, this is good. Try to do it while you're going to activities, and, uh, and also other memories and all that, you know, you must see how, we, how the idea of ego, idea of self is created. And one does to sort of not identify with certain, you know, that's very important. And even if someone is calling, like this lady, that lady I told in the kitchen, where she, she, then you get the art of not reacting. Whether it's the working place, or that becomes so practical. And if you really continue, no one will start to scold you. You will change your entire destiny. I will tell you one, how many of you are working here still? I think in this part of the world all are working, right? Still working? What? Sorry? Retired now. Uh, you worked very hard in the past. All of you are working, anyone else? Not many, eh? Most of you are retired people here? 
Okay. Then you're not facing, you should have made me long years back, right? When you're working. So this story, it will not, uh, you know, it's my person when I was working as an auditor, how I practiced. Uh, so it's very, because suddenly stress and pressure may come, and how do you satipatthana? They really work when you try to focus, to not the present moment. It can create miracles. It's an unnatural way of reacting. So if you do that, miracles also are unnatural. It will happen to take place. I just do a short, in a short form, I can't explain what happened really. To be long. So we do a small meditation. Okay, any more questions? Who uh, is that lady there who asked me that uh, something? Yeah. No, you? No, no. In the afternoon? Oh, and then date I will tell, right? It was for her. <laughs> yeah, she. That is your wife, no? Someone who asked, okay. Mm. But you're good. <laughs> uh, shall I tell that? Uh, but then I have no time for a little bit. Uh, no, we go on, no problem. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. I will, I will, shall I tell you that story? My teacher, you know, used to um, sort of, uh, you know, he used to, he's the one who gave us this way of Pindapada. So normally if anyone asks Pindapada, it's like a Sri Lanka everywhere, it's not, it's just a simple thing. Things, there's nothing in it. So that's where the monks, their blessings, their powers come to the people. From the jungle, when they are coming out, but they have meditated, practice, and that has a, it's a silent operation, but it's so powerful and effective. So this, I think, in Sri Lanka, some form, my teacher is the one who told us, and even other monasteries, they said, what is this? But then they saw crowds were coming for this Pindapada. And it was stopped for some time because I was going to Himalayas. So then in, I don't know how it came up, in Australia. So now I decided, everywhere I go I tell, because this is some of the things I have to give the people, whatever I have. So one aspect of this Peter Pater. So I happened to go across the LTT area in 2003, from Gaul to Nagadipa. This was one of my memorable times as a monk. Three, four times. Even the death experience are the most. Though they are my badges, I would say. <laughs> and I want... Sometimes I would like some people to know this could be the things that for introduction, because then they will know, you know, that this they have to make a real stand, you know, that and then do something. There's someone coming, are facing this particular thing, and um, and if they have crisis, what is it? Everything can be positive and can create a moment for a great success. So anyway, this LTT area. So some years back when my teacher was, you know, when we used to go arms round every morning, we used to sort of make our mind, you know, like he used to give blessings to the whole area and the whole country. And normally he used to be even near the fishing village, villages, so Durandua. He used to tell fishermen also we serve you, like that you said, they even the poorest person get a chance to give you dhanan. And you're giving opportunity to give the, like that. He used to tell many blessings. One day, he was telling, you now when he was blessing the whole world and when he spread this metta, he told Sri Lanka, in Sri Lanka, north of Sri Lanka, uh, that the, he used to tell the people who have gone astray. He was mentioning the, the terrorists, the LTT, the freedom fighters or terrorists. It depends how you look from each angle. So, so he uh, used to tell, they will also serve you. Now every word of him is to note, you know, because he was a very special person. So I thought maybe something is old and is <laughs> that, you know, because how can there be LTT people in the south of Sri Lanka, where we were that time. So we, um, anyway, a few days he told like that, even these people who have gone astray will be serving you, like this, like that, or, you know. So two years went by, this was only for two days, three days, but it was very clear was like not falling into place. So I happened to go after three years on this wandering trip, started from Gaul, and got his permission, and he told me also that the divine angels will be you know, protecting you. I never forget that. Ishtakami Devata Anvansin Arakshaka, or not Arakshaka, he said they will be protecting you. 
So I was not, I, we don't plan a lot to go there or here. So my initial target was Colombo. By walk, we all going by walk that time, sleeping night time in the monasteries. And then uh, from Colombo to Anuradhapura. Then I came to Anuradhapura, then I had this, the same distance from Gaul to Anuradhapura, Anuradhapura to Nagadipa, Nanitu, but cutting across the LTT area. So anyway, I will go fast in this story. I didn't say how what happened, There's so many things happened. It's another entire talk if I'm going to give. So there I happened to cross the first checkpoint and they, I had good cover to meet some good leaders there and they gave me pass and everything. And then uh, the second checkpoint of theirs, then they call me inside somewhere. So see, I went inside and they, uh, then I saw that this gentleman who gave me the pass, he has come uh, ahead and then he was already there and some reporters. And then he told uh, some uh, Swami, these are reporters, can you tell what is your purpose, what is the mission, why are you going there? this? Then I told them, I am, I am doing this for my heart. I don't want this to be publicized. So this is true, that's what I was doing. And they were a little surprised by that, because they thought maybe I am, you know, some kind of, um, uh, that I want it to be public and publicized and so on. So he told don't disturb this for me, just allow him to think. And then he told somebody something I heard one day. How many people are here? Also? No, no, there's no, you have no connection then. Eh? Not today. Okay. <laughs> you are trying to escape from me, right? <laughs> Someday they will come, right? Is it like that? Okay. Yes, my thing is very different, you know. I don't know how to explain this. Anyway, so he actually, uh, he, uh, then he told something and they brought something. And I could remember they were brought, they brought vade, you know, their food. Vade. And he was going to serve this. And these are military people, you know, they have been... And I remember I took my bowl and I got up. And he got up and he kept, removed his cap and took his hand. Now they are not Buddhists or anything like that. And I opened my thing and he put the body into the bowl. As soon as he put that, I suddenly remembered my teacher. How he was so, I don't know, it was very... You know, it gave me a chill that time, suddenly, my goodness, in time. This was, uh, and meeting you all also. So I had a special person who inspired me. And I hope all those blessings will follow to all of you. To really follow this path without any distraction, with determination and strength of mind. Remember to make your heart pure as possible and you will achieve whatever you want. This year to first your parents and your surroundings to get their blessings. So it was just a shock that time I never forget. So meeting the masters is a great blessing really in your life if you happen to meet anyone. It is a rare opportunity and that will change rust to gold. And this is something, yeah, it's very interesting. And even this meeting is very interesting. He used to tell many monks to go to, you know, like, uh, what is this, uh, not jung, I mean, uh, to jungle. Don't come even to city. And some foreign monks, he was very stern about going to seeing their relations or anything. But in my case, he was telling, he used to ask, did you get invitations? Those days, I was a small monk. <laughs> But it's very interesting. It prepared in my head and of course I had always this love to serve the people. This was there, but I had no intention to mingle with people. I don't like crowds myself. I run not even a single person I like to stay alone. Now in this situation people organizers are taking me here there, so I can't help it. But uh, but otherwise uh, so yeah. So we do a small meditation, okay? And you know, this is my first program. And <laughs> I'm also becoming sentimental, is it? <laughs> okay. And we do a small meditation. Means I want this idea for you to get. When you uh, now from this, I can straight go to the second uh, program. No? It's like that. 
feel the same crowd, no problem. If new people are coming only, okay. You can see how in the I go with like a marathon. Hmm? Someone giving us talk for four hours, five hours. It's okay, I can do it. Maybe only today. <laughs> Too much talking also is a hindrance for eating, sleeping, talking, and a lot of activity. It's all also drain your energy. But I have learned to do some practice where you know I don't feel I don't get tired, get some energy and doing this. This is how I'm telling you when you have to drive and now this is my work. <laughs> but I should learn to do it without getting really tired. But uh, as I told, we are not preachers or teachers, we are yogis. Um, so you learn to I do a small thing. I need one of you. First you must learn to relax before you meditate. Okay? So when you move to relax, I wonder if you were not relaxed all this time. So you never so you must be relaxed. Okay? But I will check whether you are relaxed. So what we do, I need one gentleman. look at this gentleman and this gentleman should look at his mind <laughs> okay and just think this is just some some perception outside you're getting of a group of people simply that it is really an illusion after some time it's no more like what you saw in few minutes ago you saw something it's no more you just that is also another way to see the impermanence how you you know to do this meditation I was telling Dudukuna, Metta, and then reading the Dhamma and in analyzing, which will activate insight. This is the final good meditation which brings to see who you are, what is what is you, what is the you stuff. Is there such a stuff as you that should be unchanging? So you can also see what has happened to you in the past. Hmm? Any memory, that's the easy way. You saw, we went Pindapath, I can remember that today in the morning. Just picturing it. What happened to that? It's no more. And how it is, just no more, you know? And that, what was it, that experience? It was a state of consciousness. You felt something. You perceived what you felt. And maybe you reacted to what you perceived. These are the factors in your consciousness, okay? This is happening in every moment of your consciousness. Did I recognize a forest? That was consciousness, perception. It was not some brain cells or molecules working only. That is, even to know the brain cells and molecules is also consciousness. <laughs> Without consciousness, you don't even perceive you have a body. So, this Buddha analyzes in those original sutras. I can explain to you like that and show you that emptiness of consciousness and like this never existed and all that. They are also good. But you should not rely, that is not enlightenment. That is some, there many monks will explain to you these things. This is also good, I like this. But it's a great hindrance when you don't refer the Buddha's simple way of explaining things and looking into Phenomena, because that will trigger an entire new or an entire level of awareness, which is very life transforming and very solid. So other ways of explanation is good. I like, we have to think also, it's not only worshipping and praying. We must be able, if somebody is shouting, to know this is not real. Some tasty food is there to know that 
and that is more, uh, you know, coming closer to knowing the reality. But we need uh, what is this? Uh, so, so there, separately you must go through. There are special discourses called skanda, skanda varga, salayatana, satipattana, the mindful meditation, mindful discourse. So those you take few parts and you must apply. Now I will just demonstrate a little bit only of that, but now before you do that, you must learn to relax your body. It's called Kaya Viveka, then Chinta Viveka. So if you don't know how to relax your body, you can't go further in this. It becomes an intellectual thing, something yourself, not applying to your present situation. So the gentleman is here. First you learn not to do anything, even meditation. And uh, I just don't want to go further. I just want to just demonstrate. Just don't meditate, okay? Keep your eyes open. You all can look at them. And just think when you're falling for you, when you're falling asleep, you forget about the environment, everything, right? Yeah. Get that feeling, that thought. And just, uh, you know, you just meditate. You know, meditate, please, sorry. You just. Uh, uh, think when you're going to fall asleep, you don't think about anything, right? Get that mental idea. I will do something, don't pay attention to that. Just try to relax and relax the body. You're still in tension, my friend. Your intention, take a deep breath. Don't worry the people and all that. I mean, you might tell it's easy for Bhante because he doesn't know any of them. <laughs> I know all of them. <laughs> okay. Take a deep breath and don't try to meditate also. Don't think people are looking at you. Forget about that. You get my man mind. Okay? Relax completely. Right? Take a deep breath and tell all the tensions out. Okay? Take a deep breath. Think like you're sitting near a beach, okay? In front of a beach, relaxing in a park.
Sorry, I'm speaking Singhalese now because the time is up, maybe. <laughs> so it's normally nicely tuned, you know. <laughs> okay. Um, so just be mindful of your, you know, like, just from like looking from outside. And uh, listen to the sounds you are hearing right now. Some fan or I don't know heater, you can hear that, right? 
relax with that. Just be harmonious with that moment sound. A baby is speaking or sounding. When you're relaxing and trying to listen, when you have naturally come to the present moment, you will notice you are breathing. In breath, out breath, you will automatically notice. Wait for the automatic moment of noticing it. Your awareness is so close to your body that time. These are initial steps if you want to meditate, I am telling you. And you rest with that present moment. And it's like looking from outside how you are seated. And while you are looking like that, I am dressed with a robe. You all are dressed maybe jersey, dress something. Not how you are dressed, the jacket maybe. Look at yourself like from looking from outside. Now, you will analyze and investigate the Buddha's teaching. This is how you apply. When you are reading the sutras, the original teachings one day, just take one section and help yourself to let go more. When you are properly applying, if you are holding on to more, that relaxation will deepen. You feel a cool effect in the forehead area. It will be a pressure you want to follow. But this is a good pressure. So the Buddha says one place, Rupam Bhikkave, I'm telling in Pali language, Rupam Bhikkave Nityanva Nityanvati. Is the body permanent or impermanent? Now to answer him, you don't answer like a parrot or just for memory or something. Really you think. He's asking whether it's permanent or impermanent. Have you ever seen your great, 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 great grandmother, grandfather? Nobody. That body was there, it's gone. Just what you have really known, you can apply to yourself. Was there any time a body and all the body is getting old and dead? Just visualize. Even if I stay long after some years, this same destiny could happen. Silently, you should feel this reality. This is now coming to the main part of our, all these exercises. Getting tranquil, more you are tranquil, more you will be knowing that wisdom. So you watching your own body, is bound to definitely disintegrate. I'm sure when you really think about it, though he's dressed with a robe or any clothing now, no particular sickness, but he's going to. So then you answer the Buddha, Anityam Bhante, impermanent master. Then the Buddha says, Yampanang Anityam Dukkham Vadam Sukham Vati. What is impermanent, it is happiness or sadness. Then you know if I is bound to finish all my bondages, attachments, even how much joy it brought, it's going to create sadness. Sad experience is already sad, but a happy experience which has impermanence, bound to be impermanent, is going to bring sadness in the end. More the enjoyment, more the sadness. So you think, oh, to answer the Buddha, Buddha says, what is impermanent, suffering, changeable, can you call it, this is me, this is myself. Just imagine the last birth, the body you had. Now, 
You had a name, you thought it was you. Where is it now? Only the skeleton may be left over. That before that time, you brushed the teeth, everything, you gave a name, nothing is there now. Maybe the skeleton. Picture it. Same thing happened to this body too. It's going to be cremated or whatever. And you picture, until you let go all your holdings, then you will not see like a hair is gone. <laughs> you see that it was a burden. It's nice to not to think about it and accept the things that will fall off. What is changeable, impermanent, can you call it? This is me, myself. No he no sir, no master. When you see that it is so peaceful that you have vision, that becomes a great peace. Your mind is free from greed, hate and delusion. <coughs> And you picture yourself, how peaceful it will be if I experience this. Just this peace. May it be experienced by the people in this hall. Not only this hall, all this area. In London, I don't know, Thames, this area, its name. Like you're going in a helicopter. Entire England, Great Britain. Then Ireland, then the continent, European Union, whatever. So many human beings in different countries. Then slowly going to Africa, Mediterranean, India, Sri Lanka, China, North America, South America, Australia, Japan, all human beings. May they get this vision regarding their body and existence that all this is changeable, the suffering. And they get detached and free from it. So they come to actual peace. So you wish all the planet human beings, like you are looking from space, this vision is clear to you and peace in you. Not only human beings, animals, creatures, <coughs> de demons, evil spirits, the hell worlds, Vedarani, Paduma, Avicca, may all those suffering will be free from this suffering. Not only them, the divine angels, divine beings, Chatu Maharaj, all forms of existence, Higher beings have no, not too much greed, hate and delusion. But may they be free from any type of development. You picture them like you are looking from space. And the higher Brahma Lokas, the highest worlds, they have no greed, hate, but the ego is there. The feeling of somebody is there. Even when that weight is gone, how peaceful it is. So you form like from far away, wishing all forms of existence. May they be free from greed, hate and illusion. From the lowest worlds to the human plane, to divine angels, to the highest worlds. May they come to inner peace and purity. See your breath calming down, get focus. Some blessings. If 
you go home, try not to talk tonight. Now I just gave you an idea when you are reading the sutras, Buddha's words, how to apply. Okay, now you'll be coming across he's speaking like that. Just a brain translation. Try to apply to yourself calmly. He's talking about a supreme detachment of a final realization. It's not some experimented thing. So learn to relax like that. And May you get a person more and more experience. May you become alive in the Dhamma, in the teachings. And you will enjoy your life, nothing to fear. There won't be anything greater than that. Your life, I tell always, you may fail in your family life, it's okay. You may fail in your career, that's okay. Don't fail this. <laughs> this, no failure. I told you the greatest crime is never knowing the secret of life and dying. So I give you some blessings. Just keep this. If you talk, it's some energy that will... This is coming from a silent practice of in the mountains, say in the Himalayas, this cosmic this energy. So it will help your life. So in the night time, it will have more blessings coming. So just morning if you can talk is good. The more you talk, the energy will go from your cell system. If you give you the most support. problem, you can slightly raise, raise your hand, and slightly if you, which is bothering you still after the program or you feel anything, you don't have to tell me, you can just raise your hand slightly.